Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Sam's Podcast. I'm Sam. And I'm Shades. And Shades, what are we talking about today? Uh, today we are discussing comic book television adaptations. Woo! Uh, or, maybe, <laughs> uh, or maybe uh, more specifically, if that wasn't clear, uh, comic books that are being adapted in television. Uh, since uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., debuted the other day and we got the news about the gotham tv show and let alone the flash and arrow and you know just all these uh things it feels like and obviously the walking dead um there's a the comic books are all over television at the moment yeah true that it um feels like we're getting all, all that all that talk of um of you know maybe someday comic books and uh, the media will be one well i think it's i think we're at that age now where um, they're taking over television as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that we are, uh, like, Fox just, like, out of the blue picked up, uh, you know, a, a Gotham TV show. And <laughs> yeah. they're totally yeah. cool supporting a show set in the Batman world without Batman. And obviously, we don't, you know, what we know about this show is very little right now, but we do know that it's going to be a show without Bruce Wayne. It's going to be pre Batman. Mm. Um, so I guess we can maybe presume it takes place in the time that, uh, Bat like Bruce Wayne is not in Gotham, like he's gone training. Uh, if, if we're going by, uh, I'm not saying it'll be set in the Nolan verse, but if we go by what Batman Begins was doing, then I presume it'll be set in that time where Bruce goes and, uh, he, he basically disappears. Uh, and maybe one of the, towards the end of the show, one of the big, overarching things will be oh bruce wayne's back in gotham and suddenly you know all these crime all these uh these villains all being will be uh you know gift wrapped by uh, a strange vigilante I, I that's what i would uh would think they might do oh wouldn't that be a cool tease if at the end he sees the bat symbol yeah like i would be like it's similar to the uh the smallville thing where okay you know it's inevitable that he's going to become Superman, so we'll save that for the very end. Um, I hope they don't go the same route as Smallville in the fact that, you know, we're going to give you the suit, but not really. And I, I <laughs> yeah. it's not the sort of thing where it's like, well, we're going to give you Batman, but not really. Like, I hope maybe we, we get the establishment of, okay, Bruce w or Batman and Gordon work together, and... Uh, and then it's the start of a new chapter, and that's the end of the show. Because then it would become a different show. Yeah, uh, exactly. So that that might be pretty cool. Uh, that obviously, I would say that'll be way in the future. I I don't think that they're thinking. You know, by season two, Batman will be around. Like I, I have <laughs> a feeling they're going to try and stretch this out as long as they can. Uh, you know, without it being too, uh, you know, too goofy a time frame for them to stretch it. And of course, that's the kind of thing they're doing with Arrow at the moment, where um, they're they're introducing they're introducing Flash into season two, aren't they? Mm. That's that's um, I'm I'm I don't know if we're gonna go if we're gonna go through like a, a timeline of of different shows, but um, on that topic, just at the moment, I have absolutely no idea how they're gonna pull that off because. I mean, Arrow has kind of established itself as being in this slightly uber-realistic universe. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm all for, you know, DC characters coming together. Um, I'm insanely confused um, as to how many um, and which TV shows and or DC movies are in which continuities, because we've now got all we're going to get, um, Gordon, Arrow, uh, and they are doing a Flash series as well. Um, yeah. And then they're doing uh, so we've got the the Superman Batman movies, um, and then we've got uh, I think Flash was confirmed. So um, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember if it was confirmed or not, but if it's not confirmed, it's still it looks like it's happening, mm -hmm. or at least strongly uh, considered that it is. I, I can't. I, it might have been confirmed. I apologize. If I'm, uh, well, I. I I think I think it was announced at Comic Con, I'm not, but I'm not. But like you said, I'm not sure it's confirmed. But what's interesting is that the they announced that, and then they announced the TV show. So what I'm wondering is if they're gonna try and use the TV show to establish him, 
and then bring him into the movies with the same actor. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because I had a conversation with someone who uh, said to me during the first season of Arrow, do you think uh, Laurel will eventually become Black Canary? And I said, well, yeah, she kind of has to, doesn't she? I mean, they're dropping all these hints. She has to, right? Mm. And they said, I, I can't see superpowers being in this continuity, though. And I yeah. said, oh, yeah, she's got a point. And then it's like, <laughs> and Flash is going to be spun off. And it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm cool with them using um, a successful show to launch a launch as a launching pad for uh, another show and another character to maybe get a bit of spotlight in pop culture. Like, that's cool. I mean, everybody knows who the Flash is, even if they know nothing of, you know, Bart Allen or Wally West. Like, everybody on the planet knows the Flash. Well, the Flash, uh, the Flash guested on um, uh, Superman the Animated Series, didn't they? When they, yeah, yeah. When they first started just, animating him. Yeah, I mean, and he had that show in the 90s, and he's just kind of one of those characters that you don't have to know anything about comic books to know if somebody says, you know, who's the Flash, they'll, you know, describe the Flash to me. Yeah. Uh, to just a random person on the street, they'll go, oh, he, he wears red, he, he runs really fast. Like, everyone knows the Flash. <laughs> like, you know, describe the Hulk. Oh, he's big and green Hulk smash. Like, it's he's one of those characters <laughs> that, like, everybody knows. Big and um, green Hulk smash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, so, uh, I understand why the Flash... It's kind of an intelligent choice to make a TV show about. Um, I am a little confused at why they'd want to spin it off of Arrow, just because, to me, at least right now, Arrow doesn't seem like the sort of show where they could uh, do superpowers yet. But yeah. you know, I'm not going to judge it until they actually do it. They might do it and I'll be like, oh, wow, that was really smart. Or they might do it and go, eh, that stretches the boundaries of this show a little bit but we'll see yeah the, the, the it wouldn't worry me as much if um and they, they've done this with man of steel and batman as well is that when they first made these projects they didn't intend to have them well they didn't intend to have them become part of this bigger universe and and so they were in their own respected universes so like man of steel was kind of a uh, quotes realistic universe and as was arrow but now you've got you know batman coming in and it kind of works a bit more in man of steel because it is you know it is quite fantastical um with the whole alien origin stuff but um but you know it, it does feel like there there were many things they put in that movie where they clearly weren't thinking about batman or setting things up for a batman movie um, and I feel we've got the same thing here with Arrow, where they've kind of set up all this stuff and uh, all the kind of extraordinary things that were from the comics has kind of been changed into a more... It's either... Like like Count Vertigo was drugs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I thought that was... I mean, I thought that was great for, for the universe it was setting up because, I mean, the, the show itself is good, so I don't really care what tone they're going with. Um, but it, it is quite fairly obvious that i mean that just bugs me uh, on a personal level like when um when they, when things are introduced when they clearly weren't intended to be um uh, when they clearly weren't t didn't intend to go there in the first place yeah it's uh i mean there's been hints of some some fantastical elements like he has the uh the stuff from the island that heals things really easily but yeah the magic I leaves that i went Wow. Okay. Uh, just don't don't tell anybody in the world about that. Because, you know, why would you know, med like why would doctors want this medicine that can instantly like heal people? I just um, love how simple it is in that episode when um uh, when Slade is is uh he's like injured and Tommy just goes, you know what? There are these magic leaves. I'm gonna go get some. <laughs> he's like, Yalfe, had this stuff that can kill you. I'm gonna go get it. So, um, and, you know, I, I liked. I actually liked uh, the whole point of that episode. That was, you know, oh, that was great. Does he uh, does he save this guy he doesn't know, or you know, does he go by Slade's word of not trusting anyone else? Oh, and I was and, so glad he didn't save that guy because I thought 
I thought he was going to succumb to annoying character syndrome. Yeah, I really, uh, I was like, <laughs> if they've got like two, Slade and two wimps, like the island scenes are going to get real fun. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they, like, they didn't go down that. I, I actually, I feel like, and I'm not criticizing them for this because I liked how they wrapped it up, but I feel like by the end of the season, they went, oh, we forgot about that character. Yeah. Let's make him part of the, uh, 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 what was it? Oh, Friar's uh, men. So they did the thing where Oliver's captured and uh, there he is sitting at the desk. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he just does I, an evil smile. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Um, and, and that, I, that, that, and they had the, a similar thing with, um, uh, Walter. Yeah. Like yeah. he disappeared and then, uh, all of a sudden they were like, oh yeah, Walter, we, we kind of need to find him. And then they found him and I, I'll be honest, I loved his exit because it was, uh, that character in particular was very well written. He, he didn't like that. They could, they could have found a really easy way to make that character, uh, keep information from us in a really annoying way where he'd find things out about, um, oh crap. I forgot what his mum's name is now. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Queen. <laughs> yeah. Let's just Moira. go with that. Um, and, uh, and the fact that, you know, he came out and, and told her these things, you know, I found the book, blah, 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 as opposed to kind of going behind her back. And I think that was a really clever thing because I genuinely cared when he left the show. I felt sad. Yeah, um, Moira is Oliver's mum, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, um, I was thinking Martha, and I'm like, no, that's Superman's mum well, and it... Swain's mum. Well, I was, uh, I was think, I, I had Moira in my head, but I thought, no, that's because I watched X Men recently, and I'm thinking of Moira <laughs> <with> Taggart. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I kind of find that funny too. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I really like the Walter character, and. Um, it was very clear that maybe not so much that they forgot about him. I mean, I guess they kind of did, but they also realized, oh, we need to maybe wrap this up. And they might have been always intended to bring him back towards the end. What they didn't do was, like, consistently bring him up during the show. And, like, Thea had her, uh, her 18th birthday party, and she's like, oh, everything's perfect. And I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, stepdad still missing because you're <laughs> dead. Like, um, yeah, so I, they things like that kind of bugged me a bit because they they clearly not necessarily that they forgot him, you know, forgot about him, but they forgot about him during episodes. Yeah. Um, not as an overall arcing story, but it's, it's definitely in certain episodes. Um, but. Uh, uh, I was gonna make another point. I forgot what it was. Uh, <laughs> I liked the Walter character. He was cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the interesting thing is, like, um, I think it's safe to say we both like Arrow. Yes. Um, we do. But I think we can also both agree that um, that show, uh, while good, it has its flaws in that it it has this uh, repetitious thing of forgetting things or leaving things too late, and the one that. The only one that kind of um, properly uh, annoyed me in the t in the context of the overall series was the um, was the romance between Oliver and uh, Laurel because um, I thought they were doing a, it kind of started kind of annoying and kind of gossip girly all that annoying stuff yeah because um, you know CW audience what are you gonna do um, yeah and then it kind of it started to get away from that more mature you know the relationships were realistic um i loved tommy um and um and but then all of a sudden you know um they break up and she's crying and she's and ollie oliver kind of says oh yeah i still like you but nothing can ever happen and then instantly she's like well maybe i can be with oliver instead <laughs> and it, it's just so flick of a switch and it, it really felt like the writer's saying Quick, we we didn't we left it too late. We've got to get them back together. We forgot. Yeah, I. It's funny. I, I found it uh, really forced when they first did the uh, the Tommy and Laurel romance, and uh, I just I didn't like it. I I remember saying because uh, I did a 
like a review of the first half of the season. And Coolio and I were saying how every time this song, like there'd be like a, a not a pop song, but like a love song yeah. would come in in the background and you're like, oh, now we're going back to Laurel and Tommy. Mm. And I, I got so annoyed. I really liked, I came to really like Tommy. Um, I yes, think when I... he finally kind of stood up for himself um, against uh, Merlin, I went, well, I, I, Tommy's kind of awesome. <laughs> and, uh, he became a character that I really enjoyed. And, uh, I mean, if, if you haven't seen Arrow, I don't want to spoil anything, but, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, I, I really came to like that character. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it was – what I was originally saying with Laurel with the superpowers, they – cast black canary yeah that, that really confused me yeah especially when uh the actress uh katie cassidy who plays laurel uh and that's something i never thought i was going to get used to calling her laurel but <laughs> uh, it's supposed to dine her but i, I have um they, they've they've dyed her hair blonde for this yep you see so you'd think they're setting up Black Canary even further with her, but apparently they've cast someone else. Yeah. Well, the, the interesting thing is they, like in the trailer, have you have you seen the, the season two trailer? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think she, she says something, if I'm remembering it correctly, she says something like, oh, someone needs to sort this town out or someone needs to sort the city out and I'm going to take down whoever, blah, blah, blah. And... I, I think in the I think to any normal person that's just meant to be like oh I'm gonna lawyer up, um, but I wonder if it's meant to be like she's taking things into her own she's taking action and maybe maybe they just maybe it's just uh, a different actress when she's got the mask on maybe they just didn't get the right I'm trying to I'm trying to find the logic in the <laughs> in the two actresses' decision. Yeah, it, it's funny I um because I think she says. Uh... My boss wants to capture the hood, and I'm gonna help him. Oh, that was. And I went. Oh, that, that's kind of interesting. And uh, I could see her doing the sort of thing where she she blames the hood for Tommy's death. And uh, spoilers. So they're kind of doing like a Gwen Stacy, uh, Peter Parker, you know, death of Captain Stacy thing uh, from the comics there, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, so that I'm really intrigued to see that. Uh, I said I wasn't going to spoil anything. Sorry. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> if you haven't seen Arrow by now, come on. Yeah, go back in time and don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, we might need to put a little spoiler. Uh, uh... Yeah, I'll stick one. I'll stick one in the title. <laughs> um, Shane but... spoiled this podcast. Sorry, Tommy's <laughs> dead. Uh... He's so dead. I didn't kill him. Don't blame me. <laughs> I liked him. I was shocked. I that was not. So, I, I guess we can talk about it. That was something <laughs> I was not expecting. And it uh, when it was happening, like at first when it looked like they were going to kill off Laurel, I went, "Oh wow, she might not be Black Canary then." <laughs> and uh, then like Tommy came in, I went, "Oh no, no, they're going to kill him." <laughs> and they did, and I went. I, I thought Stephen Amell was great in that scene. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he's someone who has really grown with the character. And when I did a review of the pilot, I originally said I liked him. I didn't love him, but I could see him. I could see him really growing on me as the show goes on, as he grows with the character. And he absolutely did. And uh, he's clearly very devoted to the role. Uh, the fact that he does himself without wires all that crazy training stuff and uh spends hours a day training in archery he, he's very dedicated to the role oh, he yeah. clearly loves dc um that's pretty awesome yeah i think he's i think he's um i think he's actually quite fantastic um and he he looks like he's having a hell of a he looks like he's having a lot of fun because um i mean he gets to play oliver as um kind of during this character and i'm also amazed that he because he must he you you'd have to be paying really close attention to that show to keep track of because he's he's technically going through two separate character arcs 
You've got the one where yep. it's on the island, and you've got the one um, in the present. And then on very few occasions, um, and I say that it was probably just the one time, but um, there was even when there was even a, a flashback to even further back that one time when he was like, "Hey, Dad, can you? I can't split a hundred dollar bill for the pizza guy." <laughs> this jerk pizza guy can't break a hundred. <laughs> so yeah, like he, the guy, he's clearly um, invested a lot in it, and um, yeah, I wouldn't like him to go anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. Um... You know, I, some people are going to disagree with me, I guess, but I would almost say he deserves, like, an Emmy nomination for what he's been doing because he does so many different roles within the one role. Yeah. Um, he said he's he's going through two character arcs, so he's got uh, Island Oliver and he's got Oliver that only Dig sees, uh, like Dig and Felicity see, and then he's got, you know, Green Arrow, and then he's got... Uh, Playboy Oliver, and you know, so he he's got all these different versions of this character that he plays, and like you said, when he does flashbacks as pre Island Oliver, he gets to do a whole bunch of different stuff. He's really dedicated to the role, and uh, he's giving a great performance. And I think it's awesome that Green Arrow of all characters is getting this much depth. Yeah, and uh, I when they first announced a Green Arrow TV show, I thought cool if there was one character to get a spin-off from smallville he's it yeah and when it wasn't going to be a smallville spin-off i thought oh well that's kind of sad and i uh I, i'm really happy that it wasn't because it's just given them a whole new canvas to paint on and uh i'm really happy for yeah same here like uh the same with you i when i heard it wasn't going to be a smallville thing i thought oh that's stupid because i don't want to have to see another origin <laughs> like i'm not yeah. I don't hate Origins, but um, I mean there are some that I've just seen too many times. I've I've read Green Arrow's origin. I've seen it on TV, and I think I did. They ever show it in Justice League Unlimited? I don't know, actually. I don't think they did. Um, but the I mean I, but you know I was very surprised. Um, yeah, great show, and it's funny you were talking about thinking Laurel was going to die because the finale was just one giant tease for every character dying. Yeah, it was. And the uh, what my friend and I actually thought was going to happen, we thought that uh, Laurel was going to die whilst uh, in between this um, kind of time period where Tommy had seen Olive, Oliver, you know, and her getting it on in, in, yeah. uh, in her apartment and then she would die. And that's that. What that's what would um, fuel the rivalry. Yeah, that that would have been cool. I uh, I wondered if uh, you know, I guess part of what the next character arc will be is they got together before Laurel and Tommy really uh, got the opportunity to patch things up, and yeah. now he's dead and she feels guilty. So. That'll be a really interesting thing to do as well. Yeah, I, <coughs> I wonder if... Because um, I can't really imagine... It's, it just screams awkward in my head if I imagine them now, just after Tommy having died. And, um, and I mean, you know... Uh, uh, what's his name? I can't believe I'm forgetting this. Detective, La Detective Lance. Um, yeah, yeah. When he... Uh, when they um, escaped the building while it was on fire, you know, when she went back to pick up some papers, um, and he uh, and he was holding her back, and uh, maybe I'm getting this wrong, but I could have sworn she said, you know, I love him. Yeah. So um, it, it it's gonna something's gonna that's gonna have to spice things up a bit. Yeah. Maybe even get in the way. Yeah, and it's it's what we were originally talking about, which got us onto the subject of Arrow, um, uh, was the notion of introducing other characters in this show. I liked what, and I liked a lot more than most did what they did with uh, Huntress. Um, apparently, some people just really didn't like that. I, I was fine with it. I liked it, um, but it, it, can you see them bringing in? Other characters, I know they've announced some characters like Bronze Tiger and stuff coming into the show, but do you, can you see them introducing any other superheroes characters into this show? 
the the only superhero I would have uh, see, I have to think about this really really carefully now. Um, like, I think they could do, and I know he's technically already in the show, um, but I think they could do the whole you know Arsenal thing with uh, with Roy. Um, but of course, you have to go through the entire Red Arrow thing, which which uh, is uh, at least a good year or so away. Um, um, yeah. But character wise. <sighs> I think it's difficult to say. Black Canary, I can't... The the only thing I can see... It, unless they're going all out there and just saying, you know, we're going to have these cosmic powers. Powers are in this universe, don't ask questions. Um, then I can imagine... Uh, originally, I thought they were going to do something where, I don't know, she used some kind of sound wave technology that kind of made it look like her power or something like that. They were going to find a clever way to cheat it. Um, yeah. But um, DC is is a, is a really tricky one because Marvel at the moment, especially with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, that's all one universe. Yeah. For the, for the most part. I mean, I mean, there are Marvel films elsewhere, like the X-Men movies, the new Spider-Man movies, um, which aren't in those universes. But for the most part, everyone's going to handle and everyone knows which Marvel property is in which universe. Um, with, uh, but with the DC, I, it's absurdly confusing. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I'm quite, I see, I'm mixed on the, on the Jim Gordon TV series. I, I'm a fan of Jim Gordon. That's, so I want to see him in that, in, in that way. Um, but the, the, the other thing that got me was um, the fact that DC announced it straight after uh, Agents of Shield aired? Yeah, their uh, their timing was not incidental, and in some ways, I don't blame DC for that. I mean, you know, DC are in this funny predicament now, where they have had multiple opportunities to make a Justice League film, and they. Nearly, that you know, one was about to get made. The one with with Army Hammer that George Miller was directing. Army Hammer was going to play Batman, and costumes were fitted. They were in training. They were ready to shoot in Sydney, actually. Wow! And uh, something happened with their budget, and uh, they weren't able to do it. They weren't able to do it in Sydney, and they were looking for somewhere else to shoot. And then the film just got canned. And that. At the time, I was like, "Well, good. We don't. We shouldn't have a Justice League film right now. The Batman films are still going on. At the time, it still looked like we we're going to get a sequel to Superman Returns, and it was like, why on earth would we want a Justice League film not connected to those? And you know, then Marvel come along, they make the Avengers, and the Avengers breaks all the records and is a smash hit. And I'm sure Warner Brothers and DC look at that." And go that should have been us, and obviously I think what part of what led to the success of the Avengers was the fact that you led up to this film with multiple solo films. But you know I I, I think DC are like you know that we could have had that we had the Justice League, you know we should have made a Justice League film by now. Why haven't we? And um, you know that like it, it beat out Upright Rises and. You know, it, it Man of Steel wasn't able to top it either, and now I think DC are getting a little desperate, and maybe they're getting a little greedy as well. The fact that they are possibly getting, possibly going to have up to three different continuities going on in live action at one time, but uh, like with the the Flash Arrow universe and the film continuity with batman and superman and then this gordon continuity so oh, yeah that that's gonna get they don't have to be connected and they're all you know one's on cw one's on the big screen and one's on fox so they don't have to be connected it's it's like like you said you know marvel have had the x-men films and the spider-man films and and the avengers films all going on at the same time without them being connected and it hasn't really caused much of a hassle but DC, I feel like, are getting greedy because, you know, DC used to be the number one company and Marvel are breaking ground all over the place. 
and now they have a TV show set within their successful film continuity. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in a, in a second, I guess. But, uh, you know, I, I just think DC are trying to steal the thunder a little bit any chance they can. And, uh, you know, strategically, from a company standpoint, announcing it at the same time as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is airing is not a bad move. No. Uh, it's a little backhanded, but it's certainly not a bad move because what were people kind of talking about after that? I mean, not to say that it completely stole Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s thunder, but a lot of people were talking about uh, the Gordon show uh, a lot more than the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. Not, you know, not the general public, but in terms of comic book fans, people immediately started talking about that instead. Yeah. And, you know... DC, you got to look at that and go, well, we got people talking, so good job us. Well, the, the thing with um, Warner Brothers and DC is that regardless of the content they're putting out there, they are geniuses at uh, advertising and marketing their, their films and TV shows. Like, um, yep. uh, They have uh, undeniably been masters at getting every single person on the planet to know that they're making a Superman-Batman movie. Um, yeah. the, the casting of Ben Affleck, um, I'm sure there was something like, I, Affleck could be great. Um, I'm still, um, supporting him. Um, but I, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that I bet DC jumped at the opportunity because first they must've thought Ben Affleck, that will get a lot of people's attention. And then yeah. they actually talked about, well, maybe he could be good. So I'm not saying they only cast him because he would draw in a, a big, you know, crowd. <laughs> But that was a ginormous casting choice. You know, it was on the news. Um, it was everywhere. And now they're doing this. And now they've released, which is obviously a joke, but they've released this whole Justin Bieber picture um, to only spark more, um, I guess you could say hatred. But anyone who falls for that is an absolute idiot. Um, but, I mean, they are they're geniuses at getting everyone to know that they're making this movie. And I don't think there's any way that, um, this won't actually um, become one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Yeah, uh, I mentioned in a video that like, you know, people saying they're boycotting the film because of Ben Affleck. I was like, really? You're not going to see the biggest film of that year? You're not <laughs> yeah. going to see the Superman Batman movie? Good luck with that. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, like me saying, oh, I'm not going to see Star Wars Episode Seven because, uh, I don't know, any stupid reason. I'm going to go see it whether I like it or not. Yeah, well, that, that's what I was going to say. Someone replied saying, that's not going to be the biggest movie that year. It's going to be Star Wars. And I said, well, we'll see. I mean, it, it very well could be, but... Oh, know, yeah, that's... I... that's Go a ahead. Point. That's a good point. Um, 2015 is... It's going to be... Uh, my mind's going to melt that year. I'm going to be broke. It, <laughs> exactly. That's going to be a really intense year. And, uh, you know, the fact that we've got... Uh, the Avengers 2 that year as well. Um, I mean, oh, no. wow. Like, yeah. that, that's going to be insane. But uh, it's uh, what you were saying with the casting of Ben Affleck, you're absolutely right because a lot of people said I would have preferred if they cast an unknown. And in some ways I agree, but there is no way that, that the casting of an unknown would have gotten anywhere near the attention that Ben Affleck got. Like, for example, when they cast uh, Daniel Craig as Bond, like, part of the reason so many people knew about it was because people thought that that was the wrong choice. Yeah. And, you know, like, it, you know, Bond, Bond, like that, you know, everyone was, was talking about it. And then there were people who were familiar with his work who said, no, this guy's going to be great. Like, watch Layer Cake. And it's, it's one of those things where, uh, and I, I guess we're getting a little off topic, but, um, <laughs> It's, uh, it, it is, it was, it was water cooler talk, you know? Yeah. Ben Affleck as Batman, everyone has an opinion about it. And, uh, even people who say, uh, you know, I'm indifferent to it. It's still, you know, they still have an opinion about it. And it's, uh, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how many people, presuming Ben Affleck, uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful and I'm going to presume that Ben Affleck is good. It's going to be really interesting to see just the sheer amount of people who uh, 
who go, oh, I, I told you it was going to be good. Like, you know, we'll see how many people kind of uh, jump on the bandwagon since <laughs> yeah. that is the popular thing to do. Like, for example, like, I think this is a good time to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I was not a huge fan of this pilot. Um, apparently, I'm in the minority, uh, and uh, the very vocal majority have uh, uh, told me how s- stupid I am on multiple occasions now. Well, I don't, like, I don't know how on the mi- in the minority you are, because the more and more I'm looking, uh, a lot of people are expressing their disappointment, and those comments are getting a thousand thousands of likes. So, uh, ah, really? It 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 looks like everyone's a little. It looks like everyone's a bit in between. The, the the most I'm hearing is, it was okay. Yeah, see, that was my reaction. My immediate reaction on Twitter was, it was okay, I guess. Not really what I wanted. Yeah. And I got all these replies saying, how can you say that? Because <laughs> it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted a cool spy show, and I felt like I got kind of a cheesy comedy with superhero elements. And that's just how I feel. I felt like, besides Coulson, and kind of besides Agent Ward, a lot of the characters were obnoxious and annoying. Um, I didn't care for the 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 two IT guys who uh, were yelling over the top of each other when we first met them. I was like, oh god, that 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 that's a red flag for me. Um, <laughs> and uh, then you know there was the uh, the girl who, you know, was uh, was hacking into S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything. Oh, I wanted to punch the living daylights out of Sky. Yeah, the, thank you. I couldn't remember her name. Like, <laughs> uh, probably a, a good actress, um, very attractive young lady, annoying as hell. Yeah. I could not stand her. And just every, uh, you know, I, I the, the one line I laughed at was, you know, with great power comes a lot of weird stuff, or whatever it was. Like that, that was a Whedon esque line that yeah. that made me. Yeah. Cool. But just uh, you know, that it didn't. I didn't care for a lot of the comedy in this, and it felt very much, you know. And I'm a I'm a big Whedon fan, but it felt very much beneath Whedon for me. Yeah, the I was. You see, when I first saw it, I said I thought it was pretty good. But the more and more I think about it, the more it starts to annoy me. Um, something about it. Like I, I'm a big fan of. I say big fan. I only discovered it about a couple months ago. But I uh, really got into Firefly a couple months ago. Um, right. And I thought it was absolutely um, fantastic, uh, like most people do. And I, <laughs> I intentionally avoided it because I knew I was going to love it, and then instantly get upset that it was cancelled. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like that's a great show. And so I kind of recognized a lot of things that was going on in this episode. It did seem very reminiscent of that Joss Whedon, uh, team, you know, team coming together style. But, um, I mean it, the camera angles, a lot of that stuff, it felt like a TV show. The whole thing itself to me just felt quite generic. Yeah. Um, the thing that annoyed me right off the bat is we have, Agent Coulson, who uh, everyone uh, thinks is dead except for those with uh, level 7 clearance, even though he walks the streets of Los Angeles in broad daylight with a megaphone. I was just thinking uh, that. <laughs> yeah, that, that went, well, I sure hope, like, Tony Stark doesn't fly past right now. <laughs> Seize your ass in broad daylight. Um, uh, you know, let alone the fact that he was at Union Station, uh, just with a megaphone, and and for those who don't know, Union Station is is the, the kind of the main train station in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I lived in Los Angeles for two years, um, but it's also where uh, the scene in Dark Knight Rises is filmed, uh, Scarecrow's Court. Uh, oh, cool! Yeah, so all that that you know the 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 scene that was going on there, and you, you'll see different uh, scenes get shot there, and in, in things you know like it's been used in Chuck, and I'm sure it's been used in countless movies that. A uh, hall, um, but yeah, it was also uh, Scarecrow's Court, which is pretty neat. Um, but yeah, so they're there at this major train station, and you know this secret agent who is meant to be secretly alive is just there. 
yeah. the world to see. And we've already established that, you know, people love filming these superheroes with their cell phones. So, like, you know, what's stopping people from filming this guy who's about to blow up with the extremist uh, uh, disease, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. If Colson's going to wind up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So, I just, that really, it really ticked me off when I stopped and thought, wait a second. You know, like, that. yeah, that really annoyed me. I feel so bad for not having realized that until you just said it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I didn't notice it when it was happening. And then afterwards, I was thinking, wait a second, why is it a big reveal that he's still alive? <laughs> he finally just walks around in his flying car. Oh, right. Am I the only... Right, uh, I will judge you if you do not create a what did we do with the flying car and make it another Back to the Future when this baby um, hits 88 okay. miles per hour. That that's the end. That's the ending of the next episode. Is it? Oh, I'm so sorry. I've ruined it for everyone. <laughs> no, no, that's cool. But as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Well, I've got my ending." And yeah. It was, it, you know, it's like you know where we're going. We don't need roads, and yeah. then they fly away. <laughs> so it was, it was, yeah. I went, you know, I I couldn't believe it when they did that. Yeah, and the car even came right up to the camera. <laughs> exactly. So it, it's gonna, you know, go straight into, you know, back in time. Do 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 do. Got to get back that. in like, time. <laughs> exactly. I was like, as a Back to the Future fan, kind of funny. Oh yeah. But in in realistically, like, what? I just yeah, I could I I really couldn't believe it when they did that. Yeah. But, uh, the fly the I, the flying car is kind of neat, but I mean, we're kind of. There were certain spy uh, things in the show that I liked. Like, I liked the glove that uh, uh, took the, the fingerprints and that. Like, my brother and I turned to each other and went, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And I liked that fight scene that he had with those guys. Um, I, I kind of questioned the, uh, like, the I guess it was like the drugged up uh, model that walked in and just, like, didn't react and then walked away. Oh, okay. That's... <laughs> You know, all right, but um, I guess yeah, the, I and, guess the joke was supposed to be that she lives there, so she gets this a lot, and she just decided to leave the the apartment and let them finish the fight. I guess. I I guess like my first reaction was that she like, just like, like really stoned or something, and she's <laughs> like, I must be tripping, and then she walked out. I just <laughs> I didn't get it, and it was just it was it was one of those. There was a lot of comedy in this that, um. I think was meant to be, I could see a lot of people finding it really funny. And uh, like you and I did the review of Iron Man three, where we kind of just came down on the fact that the comedy was not for us. Yeah. And I feel like that was the same with, with agents of shield. Um, at, at least for me was that I, you know, the, the notion of Colson stabbing, uh, agent ward with the, the truth serum and, him breaking down, you know, and saying "Granny" and stuff like that. I would, uh, yeah, I don't know if I like this. So that bit in particular, I'm glad you mentioned that bit in particular because that did make me kind of go, uh, "What?" <clears throat> because that that whole thing is that it makes you tell the truth, and she just mentions yeah. Grandma, and he suddenly turns into a baby. What? Yeah, I didn't know Truth Serum uh, like changed your personality. Yeah, I, uh, like the. Because I was going to say, it is interesting that you thought um, the comedy uh, was like that, because I didn't pick up on it, but I didn't love the comedy either. I thought it was kind of um, average, but there were moments that did kind of make me roll my eyes. Like, for instance, I think the biggest problem is that I don't really like a lot of these characters. Um, So uh, uh, there's not a lot of... um, I don't get a sense of fun with them at the moment. I mean, like, we're we're coming down on this a a bit, but granted it is a first episode. But from what we've seen already, they're going to have to um, progress the characters or, you know, change them over time in some way for me to start liking them. And that's obviously what they plan to do. Um, The the moody guy is obviously going to get with Sky because they made a big deal out of the fact that he fancies her. Yeah. 
which again kind of made me roll my eyes. Um, yeah, like he did the thing where, oh, whoops, I looked at your boobs. Yeah. And I was like, God. <laughs> and and of course, the second she found out that uh, they they had to they had to bring attention to the fact that she is attractive, um, in case you hadn't realized before. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that it, it's funny how people refuse to watch Arrow. Because they're like, oh, it's so C W, it's a CW superhero show. Yet here we are with Agents of Shield, yeah. Where got this already this like cheesy romance going on, or like the the, the beginnings of one, and you know people were, were were at least from what I saw, people were in love with it. Um, that was the first reactions that I got were were that people really liked it. Uh, I guess. Uh, the more people saw it after they heard it was good, and maybe they didn't like it. Um, they didn't think it lived up to, <clears throat> excuse me, they didn't live. It didn't live up to the hype they had heard. But um, it's, I am definitely open to watching more of it. I'm not going to stop watching. I, you know, obviously I, I really like the Agent Coulson character, and I really love Joss Whedon, and I'll, uh, I'll at least give it another chance. But I'm just. I'm after the Arrow pilot. I went, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I thought it's not. I could see a lot of people not loving it, and I definitely had problems. But I'm excited to see more of it, and I wasn't excited to see more of the Shield show. Yeah, when I compare the way that the Arrow pilot left me to the way the Marvel uh, Agents of Shield pilot left me, um, I was uh, pumped to see more <clears throat> Arrow. I was really intrigued to see where they were going to go with it. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I, I was, I was kind of let down by it, and uh, like I said, I will watch more. I'm not going to just go, well, that sucked, and, and stop watching. I, I will give it, uh, you know, I, it was just the pilot, and I, you know, some people, there have been bad pilots to great TV shows in the past, you know, Uh and so we'll see. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like the pilot to uh, uh, Firefly, actually. I've never watched Firefly, I've got to admit. Uh, it took a second viewing of the pilot for me to come around to it, because I saw the pilot, which is, it's quite slow, you know, a lot of the characters are kind of moody at the beginning, um, or, or rather, the main character is um, quite moody. Um, and the first time I saw the pilot, I thought, it was okay. Um, it was it was watching the series progress that made me fall in love with the series itself. Um, but you know, after I'd seen the series and then I went back and watched the pilot, the pilot was suddenly a thousand times better. Um, not only because I kind of already knew this universe, so I wasn't um, so I wasn't kind of waiting for all this exposition and stuff, but um, th there was a lot of uh, clever stuff going on in the episode and. Um, I can't really see how, because that's the thing. When I was watching it, I the main thing I was thinking of was, God, I wish I was watching Firefly instead because it really <laughs> does feel like um, uh, the Joss Whedon's bastard child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it's kind of like the thing where you had this big success with Avengers. Can you do this favor for us, please? And it, it was kind of like that to me. Yeah, where maybe. He wasn't in it wholeheartedly. Uh, like, he did write the pilot, so I'm not going to uh, just sort of say, well, it wasn't Whedon's fault, and just, and, and like, not place any of the blame on him. Uh, I mean, I'm not placing blame on anyone, but I, I just, I, I'm not going to uh, exclude him from the, my criticism because, you know, he did write it, so some of this dialogue is his. Um, yeah. That that's and, the problem. If we if we say anything bad about the show, we suddenly hate Joss Whedon. Yeah, and look, I you know I, people are going to ignore me saying this. I know, but look, I, I his run. I, everyone knows me as like a big X Men fan. I love his run on Astonishing. It is my favorite X Men stuff. I just finished and, reading uh, Gifted. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's it's like when I read Gifted, I went well. Actually, when I read the first issue of his run and I went, wow, this is going to be cool. Yeah. And I, I read gifted and, and instantly fell in love. And I was like, I've got to read the rest of this. And I bought the, the other three trades and it's my favorite X-Men stuff. And, uh, 
you know, obviously I love Avengers, like everyone does, and I, I really love Buffy, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I haven't watched Firefly on purpose, I just, I haven't not watched Firefly on purpose, uh, I, uh, I just haven't watched it, um, I, so I, I, I really love Wynn's work, and I respect him a lot, um, this just was not something that I liked, and, you know, that happens, uh, we'll see, if this show we'll see how this show goes um next week's ratings are going to be really interesting because uh apparently it was one of the biggest uh uh pilots in terms of viewership uh for a drama series in america in years or something i i read something like that is um, it meant to be a drama <laughs> well i yeah well that isn't that funny to say <laughs> Um, that's what I read. Uh, so I guess when you put it like that, yeah, it's, that's kind of weird saying it that way. Um, yeah, it will, it will, it will be interesting because, um, uh, usually a TV show probably it loses a significant amount of viewers in its second episode. Um, yeah. and I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to completely shift topics or find a really awkward segue because I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, uh-huh. with uh, DC and Marvel. Um, the the thing that uh, frustrated me um, with the whole Gordon thing is that they um, they announced they announced it just as Agents of Shield was airing, and uh, and then that reminded me of when they saw the Avengers and immediately announced the Justice League movie was gonna was gonna be happening. I think DC's <clears throat> I think the the thing where DC are going wrong is just that they're not taking any risks. They're waiting for Marvel to dive into the pool and tell them it's okay to come in. Yeah. Uh like one of the big moves that DC actually I, I don't want to put blame on DC for this because I don't know how true this ended up being. because uh, I I guess it's I guess it's not true, but Maybe they put the feelers out there to see how people would react. Like, it, they could have orchestrated this. But uh, there was talk that uh, when it still looked like Thanos was going to be the villain of Avengers 2, they announced that Darkseid was going to be the villain of the Justice League. Are you, are you kidding me? No, they, they. I don't know if they did announce this, but it was heavily rumored. That, oh, my and God. I went, wow, let's get the two characters that are most alike from the yeah. opposite comic continue like comic universes and and both make them the villains like are you kidding me yeah and like obviously you know the justice league is not coming out in 2015 so you know a lot of things ended up not happening or not being true yeah. depending on you know who orchestrated the the news uh dc might have had nothing to do with it so i'm we're blaming them for nothing but it was just one of those things where i went you've got to be kidding me like you can't expect not everybody is familiar with these characters. And, you know, when you announce Darkseid's going to be the villain, you're going to get the comic book fans excited, maybe. But when the general pop, the general public go to see Avengers 2 and then the Justice League, and we've got villains that are so similar in both films, that's like putting, almost like putting out a Deadpool movie and a Deathstroke movie in the same year. Like, people are going to, people who don't know anything about them are going to see these two trailers and go, oh, they, they got like a similar name, similar actual names. They look similar. Obviously yeah. they act different, but it'd be like people uh, would get instantly confused and people are going to go and see the Avengers and then see Justice League. And you got characters that are really similar as the lead villains. Um, that's going to be great. And that might've been part of Marvel's, uh, uh, decision to go well. We're going to go with Ultron because you know how how are DC going to uh, try and you know battle us with that? Like you know, yeah. so uh, they're going to do something so completely different in Ultron. And uh, I was not on board with Ultron at first. With the James Spader announcement, I'm a lot more intrigued. So we'll see what happens there. But it's it was one of those things where I just went, wow, DC really? Yeah. <sighs> It's all it's all go, isn't it? It's all yeah. kicking off. Um, ran- <coughs> excuse me. Um, randomly, um, because it just occurred to me since we're talking about um, comic book TV adaptations, uh, 
we should really talk about um, Birds of Prey and Smallville. Please, let's. Um, I I have to admit, I have <laughs> never seen Birds of Prey, so this might be a bit quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you've seen it. Um, I have. Yes, I have. How is it? Is it good? Is it bad? Because I haven't heard good things. Here's the thing. I want to like it. Um, <laughs> there are things in it that are good. Dinah Mayer, who plays Oracle, absolutely perfect. Um, I I did a video recently where I called her my favorite casting of a female comic book character. And, you know, as a, as a fan of the Oracle character, she was perfect. Um, I kind of like uh, um, some of the things they did with Huntress. Overall, I don't think that show works. And... Part of the reason is they couldn't use Batman. Uh, so they're doing this show set in Gotham, but they can't use Batman. So they go, okay, we're going to set it in kind of the future where Batman has been gone for a really long time. And uh, uh, so, like, you know, Alfred's still around and Barbara Gordon's still around. But, uh, you know... Apparently, for some reason, Dick Grayson and Tim Drake aren't. They're just mentioned in passing. Uh, right. But Cat- Catwoman's dead. Uh, Harley Quinn's going to be the villain. And and, and Clayface is going to be uh, her henchman in the end. What? So, exactly. In concept, that's like, well, that sounds lame. Uh, also, uh, we, you know, we're going to have Black Canary not be Black Canary. She's going to be the daughter of the Black Canary and not have this uh, supersonic screeching power. Instead, she's going to be uh, some kind of psychic thing going on. That's lame. And it's going to be a coming-of-age story with her while Huntress is also learning how to use her, you know, use her cat powers. So Huntress has cat powers? Yeah, she has cat powers uh, because, for whatever reason, Catwoman couldn't not have powers. <laughs> <coughs> well, I, so, I I saw a trailer one time for it where um, they'd said, you know, use after Batman and, and, and Catwoman, and they showed shots from Batman Returns. Batman Returns, yeah. So I'm guessing it was in the the Burton universe, or it's supposed to. Take- <laughs> from there um me. certainly it doesn't look like it it wasn't set there um it was just more of, they were using that as uh to show an example of you know batman and catwoman never got along but here they didn't they had a kid <laughs> like that was <laughs> <coughs> excuse me that was basically what they were doing yeah that very sorry, weird I, I just need to get a drink real quick sorry um yeah go right for back. it I'll, uh, I'll entertain. Cheers. So, everyone, how are we doing? Uh, should we go on Facebook? So what did you guys think of... Uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I have a... Um, for some weird reason, I have a cold. And it decided to come up during this podcast. It actually... I think I'm doing a much better job of handling it this time than I did last time, um, and it was, coincidentally, it was a podcast, another podcast with Shades, um, where I just kept going, <laughs> the entire uh, episode, and you know what, guys, that was really just, just now, that was just an excuse for me to do it, because, um, you know, I have a cold, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm sure this is making me sound a thousand times more attractive, um, some guy asked why I didn't do a review of, um, Superman 2, it's because absolutely everyone on the planet has um, said uh, what needs to be said about that movie. I have nothing new to add. Um, go check out Geek Volutions review uh, or go check out Ollie H82, I think that's his his name. Just type in um, Retrospective of Superman, you'll find his um, channel. Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, um, I'm currently working on the... <clears throat> oh my god, my voice. Hang on, hang on. I just need to do a whole... 
la 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 <coughs> we are both like just we're, we're both sick at the moment aren't we <laughs> yeah uh, i've been i've been home from work the past three days just sick as hell and uh yeah. my voice finally came back to me yesterday properly but that cough is just still there yeah i i'm trying to cover up i'm trying to not go yeah because <laughs> I, I did that throughout the entire podcast last time and i didn't realize how much until i listened to it again recently um and i and i thought oh for god's sake yeah it's not a great sound for, especially when like if you if that's like the first time someone's listening to you they'll be like oh i'm not gonna subscribe to this guy <laughs> the snotty boy <laughs> the snotty british guy oh, God. <laughs> so and the sick sounding australian guy oh i hate this chap oh, and of course of course, the the snotty British guy won't sound very good when you picture in your head those Brits with the giant noses. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like, no, all the all the stereotypes are true. Yeah, like I, it's funny because we were talking earlier about Walter and uh, Sleed in Arrow, how good characters they were, and I was like, we must sound like so you know, in love with our countries right now. Like, you, you <laughs> talk about how great the British guy and the Australian guy were. So, uh, that was like... We do respect our own countries, just in case any um, prime ministers <laughs> or, or you know, <laughs> Australian... Uh, I, I don't know, I'm terrible at politics. Do you have a prime Australian prime minister, president? Yeah, we, yeah, we have a prime minister. That's, right. that's out. Right, well, uh, yeah, we were... We're doing a podcast, right? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I interrupted you because you were saying something. Did you want to tell people something? No, I was just telling people that um, I have a bad throat and I need to um, <laughs> and I need to <laughs> to quickly do something about it. So I just started randomly <laughs> singing. That sounded. I could hear that as I was coming to the door. It's like, yes, what have I come back to? <laughs> <laughs> I planned it. <laughs> Perfect. Shades is entering the building. Oh. <laughs> like my entrance music i feel like a star <laughs> right birds of prey um i guess right, yeah i yeah unless there's any more you wanted to um say about it um is there, is there anything else you wanted to mention uh oh sure i was um <clears throat> gosh excuse me i'm terrible um <laughs> uh yeah so the 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 thing with uh with batman and catwoman was uh not that it was set in the Burton universe, but more that it was, uh, they used that footage as an example of, you know, this is their history, but despite all their, uh, their, their battles between one another, they still, uh, you know, loved each other and they had a child. And because at that time, and this carried over until Dark Knight Rises, in, in live action, Catwoman couldn't not have cat powers. In Batman Returns, in Birds of Prey, and in the Catwoman film, just cat powers. Yeah, I've always hated the cat powers. Yeah, and it not only does it not make sense, like cat powers, like <laughs> what? Um, but it's also different every time. Yeah. So, what does that say? But yeah, it's also it's stupidly just... contrived every time. Exactly, and so they never explain how Catwoman got it in. Birds of Prey, because the, the first scene is uh, Catwoman is dead, and uh, Helena is, uh, you know, above her in the street going, no, oh, mom, wake up, somebody stop him, and there's a, a guy in a black coat and a hat with a knife, and you're led to think that it was the Joker, because then... As the, uh, as the Red Hood? Uh, no, just, just, just the Joker. Oh. Um, and then, like... Uh, Barbara Gordon is in her apartment, and the first thing we see her do is undress and have a shower. Hello. So they know who they were targeting. Um, <laughs> and, uh, then on the news, you know, because apparently she has a shower that was in her living room where she could see the TV. Um, the TV lady says, oh, breaking news, uh, Selena Kyle has been found in the middle of the streets of New Gotham 
because uh, they call it New Gotham in the past as well, because that makes sense. <laughs> um, and uh, she, she, there's a, she's, she's been, she's dead, and she's been stabbed. <laughs> she's dead. Uh, <laughs> I bet she doesn't say it like that, but basically, and it's Barbara Winnipeg doesn't Defoe. know. <laughs> um, so he goes, she goes, oh no, I got, I got to call Helena. So she she gets out of the shower and I guess she puts on a bathrobe. And she goes to call Helena, and then the lights go out and there's a knock at the door. Ooh. So like any smart, you know, uh, uh, ward of killing of, of joke. Batman, Sorry. Killing joke. <laughs> exactly. But like any uh, person who's been trained by Batman, the lights went out suspiciously, suspiciously, and there was a quiet knock at the door. So she runs to get the door. And then, stupid. yeah, which is incredibly stupid for Batgirl. And then Joker just shoots the shit out of her. Oh, and... no, I've seen that scene. They had yeah, Mark, and they had Mark Hamill do the voice, didn't they? Exactly, which is the best thing. That's the best. Yeah, that that was the. I think that's the one of the coolest things um, I've seen because it because they they blur out the Joker's face, but he looks like the comic book Joker. I thought, oh, that's awesome, and yeah. it's Mark Hamill's voice. Ah, oh, fangasm moment. Yeah, it, it was fantastic, and uh, then the show uh, they suddenly cut to a, a little girl uh, waking up. She goes, I saw her. I saw her die. The 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 cat lady and the other one. <laughs> she got shot. And uh, <laughs> the mother says, Oh, it'll be okay. And then they cut to that little girl who had the funny dream. She's grown up, and she's on the bus to New Gotham to try and find some answers to that one dream she had. And who should be on the bus with her? But Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. <laughs> um, which is so funny to see uh, Aaron Paul play this like nice guy, just you know, just with a normal American accent, just pure comedy. Yeah. Uh, great actor, obviously, but yeah. So the the show goes on, and you know, Barbara eventually she creates a uh, a technology where she can walk again briefly, and uh, it's just a lot of silly stuff. Clay, like I said, Clayface. Is the villain uh, just just weird? It sounds like they had a because from what I can see of the show, it didn't look like they had a massive budget. How did they manage to do Clayface? Um, he looks like a really bad version of the Thing from the Fantastic Four. Um, right. He looks like yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not like this big like monster. It's not like they could do. Like the effects for the Sandman in in Spider Man Three, it wasn't. He didn't look anything like that. He looked like I guess he looked more like the fa- the uh, Ben Grimm from that really bad Fantastic Four movie from the nineties. Oh, I love that film. <laughs> it's so terrible. It's been, uh, he looks like that thing. Uh, he just he looks oh. more like the thing than he does Clayface. Right. So it's. It's not very good. Like I said, uh, Harley Quinn is the lead villain, which kind of isn't a bad idea. Um, but there's no explanation to where Joker is. Um, and, like, for whatever reason, they kind of established that No Man's Land has happened in between uh, the death of uh, Catwoman and, you know, the, the killing joke. Um, right. Uh, and, and the beginning of the story. But they, they they clearly established that maybe only like three years has passed. Four or like five at most. And these de- there's these detectives that say, uh, like, there are, you know, once upon a time, you know, there were rumors of like a guy dressed as a bat running around. And the detectives are like, what? Get out of town. That didn't happen. Like, how could that happen? And I'm like... Wait a second. Five years ago, like Batman was being reported on the news, and now he's this urban legend. Like, <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, I'm, I'm on the uh, I'm on the IMDb trivia page for the Birds of Prey. Uh, apparently, the character of Dinah was originally intended to be a revision 
um, of the comic book character Black Canary. Outcry from comic book fans contributed to the character being retooled to become Canary's daughter instead. Right. So I guess that was meant to make up for it. Um, but yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a, a it sounds like a Smallville show. Well, yeah, I mean, they mention uh, very early in the show, um, some people got superpowers from meteorites. Like, Ooh. they come out and say that very quickly. So you're led to believe, oh, this is set in the same continuity as Smallville, except for the fact that this is set a long time after Batman was around. So this can't be the same time frame as Smallville. Right. Well, it says it says the pilot features a reference to fellow uh, Warner Brothers series Smallville. Uh, Helena Kyle, Helena Kyle, really. Helena Kyle mentions to Barbara Gordon and Dinah that meteors sometimes cause mutations. Inside reference, Birds of Prey and Smallville are both produced by uh, Tolan Robbins Productions. So I guess that was the uh, the thing behind that. I guess that's a yeah. good segue into uh, talking about Smallville. Yeah, and. Just quickly on that, like one of these shows lasted ten years and the other lasted a season, and I'm, I'm not saying Smallville deserved to go ten years, but you know they, they both started on the same network. I am still was, uh, fascinated that Smallville lasted for ten seasons. Yeah, it's the fact that we got a ten year origin story for Superman. Like, I know. Talk about yeah. dragged out. It, it's it's. I don't like hating on Smallville. I really don't. Yeah. Uh, there are things about it I love. Yeah. I love Rosenbaum, Lex Luthor, and, you know, I, I, I love what they were doing with Rick Darrow. But just as an overall story, it just, it's not, it, it's, a, once again, it's a thing where I don't think it works. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I've gone on record to say, I, I, I mentioned it in my Superman review, I, I'm always indifferent on Smallville. I, uh, when it was good, it was pretty good. When it was bad, it was awful. Um, and a lot of the time, it was bad. Um, but I, but like there were times that just like I enjoyed watching it as a kid. Um, I mean, it was the one show my sister would watch that had superpower that had superheroes in it, and it was a Superman show. I mean, it was the perfect blend. Um, but I mean, uh, I cannot stand the earlier seasons. Um, it's, oh, okay. it's so much of a, um, like I, I, I can't stand aspects of, uh, a bunch of different time periods of that show. Um, but the, I, I can't stand the teen, the teen U S drama side of the show. Um, I don't think anyone could, um, uh, I don't think anyone even likes Lana. I don't like her at all. Um, yeah, and um, I, I I started getting into it again during the final few seasons because um, I I think I I started getting so bored, especially the season after Lex died. I think it lost so much energy, and I mean Lex yeah. was, Lex was the giant seller, and they fucking killed him off. Um, yeah, I mean like always Rosenbaum wanted to leave, so. Not much it can do, but the fact that they followed it up with Doomsday, <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I I I hated what they did um, with. I get. I guess we should talk about the series as a whole until we talk about the finale, because I don't know about you, but I I have so much to say about that fucking finale. Um, yeah. But the um, but yeah, I mean, I I started getting more into it in the final seasons simply because he was starting to become Superman. As slow as it was, we were getting there. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I think uh, one of, its, one of the, the show's best seasons, uh, uh, sorry, episodes, was um, in uh, the 10th season. Um, it was called, I think it was called Homecoming, where yeah, exactly. Clark and Lois go back to um, uh, uh, Smallville High or whatever, it's, whatever yeah. the, the school's called. Um, yeah. did you ever see that one? That I was going to mention was, uh, one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. Exactly. And that was the thing that I, uh, I was really excited for season nine 
And I, I thought that season started off so well. And people hated the, the blur costume of being all black. And I was like, well, it, yeah, I guess, you know, it's, I don't like it either. But for now, if that's what they want to do, whatever, you know. And uh, I thought it started off so well with that, that first episode and then the Metallo episode. Um, I went, you know, we're getting some Superman stuff. Like, this is going to be really good. And then it immediately fell off a cliff. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then season 10, I got it excited again because of the Comic-Con trailer where they showed, you know, highlights from all 10 seasons. And I went, man, this show's awesome. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. it gave you that feeling. And yeah, it was, uh, it started off kind of cool. The homecoming episode was awesome. And then once again, I got very bored. Yeah. And, and the, the funny thing is, it's so easy. It was so easy <laughs> to get sucked in the second they started playing that Superman oh, um, theme. And you were like, Fuck yeah. yeah, turn Superman. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was really excited to. See, I was like, okay, now we get to see Superman, and, and of course we never see Superman. <laughs> oh god, like I I was not excited for that pilot. I thought the episode before it was really really bad. That second last episode, uh, where for whatever reason Jarrell was like, I'm gonna get Lo- uh, Lois powers. That'll oh be oh, you run about you run about the um, the finale. <laughs> Because you, you said, um, I was not looking forward to that pilot. <laughs> oh, did I? Like, sorry, I, I got really finale. confused. <laughs> yeah, the, sorry, the finale. I was not looking forward to that finale. And, uh, yeah, I, I, the second last episode was so bad. And then, uh, yeah, but I was like, I'm, I, obviously I'm going to watch the finale. And I can't not see the finale of Smallville. Uh, it's, it'll be entertaining to a degree. Plus, Lex is coming back, so sure, there'll be something that's good. And, wow, way to cheapen the best character on the show. Oh, I I wish it was a physical thing that I could repeatedly punch. Um, I know, right? I, I have to sorry, really... I, 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 sorry, I just, I'll be back in, in two minutes. I was um, literally going to say... <laughs> I was going to say that. Okay, all right, I'll entertain, and then I'll, and then you come back, I'll head off. And then come okay, back. No worries. Sure. I'm sure everyone is loving that we keep coming back and leaving, but I'm sure it, it, it helps everyone feel involved. Um, exactly. I can ask, uh, uh, here we go, guys. I can ask you some random questions and you can answer it and pretend like we're talking. Um, okay, here we go. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so, are you subscribed yet? Have you hit that subscribe button? You know who else you should subscribe to? Shades of Night. Yeah, go ahead, do it. Do it now, come on. Open up a new tab, assuming you're on a laptop, and uh, go ahead, Shades of Night, YouTube. Click that subscribe button. And then watch his uh, watch his entire What Did We Do series, because it's fucking hilarious. Um... <laughs> Thanks for the plug, man. <laughs> Um, and then come back, um, and then, uh, I don't know, you could, uh, we can, you can put us in your iPod, put us in your phone, I'm sure there are some people on buses listening to this right now, um, oh, but, by the way, I cannot, I cannot listen to you and, um, Coolio doing the X-Men franchise discussions, because... I laugh like a fucking animal on the bus. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> I, I I just can't I can't keep myself together. Um, I have I have to <laughs> I have to laugh in peace, and quiet. That's hilarious. I, it's funny because I remember you telling me that. And I, what was it in particular that made you laugh? Uh, it was it was either. It, it there was a bunch of the stuff. There was um there was Colossus. <laughs> That's now become a running joke. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was that. Then there was um that giant Wolverine penis of yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and oh, and man. and then there was the cat going yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I oh. say things, and so does Coolio. And later we listen back to it, and we're just like. What what the hell? <laughs> I, I loved it. Oh, 
I find it, I found it hilarious. I've listened to it about three times already. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome! Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Well, I because every time I um, every time I go to college or whatever, um, any time I travel somewhere, I say travel. Any time I leave the house, um, I'll, <laughs> I'll put in I'll put in the earphones and start listening to the podcasts and the the ones that I repeatedly listen to again and again are the X Men commentaries you did with uh, Captain Logan, um, oh, cool. and, the, and the franchise discussions. So um, you definitely keep me entertained, Shades. I appreciate that a lot, and uh, you know I, I haven't really told uh, the, the viewers this, but uh, you know Sam and I have, uh, share uh, uh, opinions on a lot of things, and that's kind of how we came about uh, doing the Iron Man three video. But uh, Sam, in my opinion, is one of the very best reviewers on YouTube because you are able to dissect things so well and uh, present both sides of the argument in a lot of ways and uh you're not just willing to kind of lay down and just uh you know go with what everyone else is saying and, and you you set up your opinions and i was rooting for you to win who reviews the reviewers uh last year and uh yeah or was that this year uh uh i can't well it was yeah i think i think it was it, it ended this year started last it ended, year. yeah it started last year and yeah that's right okay cool um and yeah so like it's uh yeah I, I i'm a big fan of yours too man so i i'm it's really cool that we get to come together and do this sort of thing because uh it's a lot of fun yeah it is. thanks a lot man really appreciate it cool. right i need a piss um <laughs> <laughs> are you are you able to entertain for a good couple of a good minute or so i will entertain all right cheers back in a sec Hi guys, what's going on? So, what can I entertain you with? <laughs> I'm not prepared. Uh, I don't know if you guys know me very well. I'm Australian, which is different to British. But for some reason recently, and I don't know how this has started and why it's only started now, but a lot of people have been leaving comments on my videos telling me that I sound like Henry Cavill. And I'm going to ask Sam this when he gets back and ask him if he thinks I sound British. I've been getting this a lot at work recently. I work at an airport, so there are a lot of accents flo like floating around. Uh, but when I lived in America, a lot of people told me I sounded uh, a British as well. I guess I, I sort of think I'm a well-spoken Australian, but I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I, I, I guess I pronounce things kind of, I, I, I'm not, I'm not like a posh guy or anything, but, you know, people generally think of the Australian accent as being Crocodile Dundee, and uh, that's not me, so, uh, yeah, I want to tell more stories about Birds of Prey, what a show, uh, what's another good story? I like the scene where uh, Lady Shiva is a, is a character that they brought in at one point. And Batgirl, or rather Barbara Gordon, decides she's going to be Batgirl again, despite the fact that she is paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, she's going to stand up and fight. So she gets her little, you know, her, her back mechanism and she tries to fight Lady Shiva and somehow it malfunctions and Lady Shiva's like, what the hell? And... Uh, you know, she, she's like, I can't beat up a cripple, and she runs away. And Huntress starts yelling at Barbara, <laughs> saying, you said that thing hurts like hell when you use it. You can't, you, you could die, or you could be worse. Now, I'm not going to, I don't say this uh, to, to, let me, let me rephrase. I felt that <laughs> Birds of Prey kind of was making light of the fact that a person was confined to a wheelchair. I was like, hey, it'd be worse. Was how? She can't walk. And, and you know, then she says, you know, who, what, who is that girl and what is going on with you two? And Barbara goes, her name is Lady Shiva. <laughs> and it's like, dun, dun, dun. It's a busy character. <laughs> oh, I, I, I came in and heard you say she beat up a cripple. <laughs> yep. 
Right, Smallville finale. I am ready right. to dish this out. Okay. Uh, what the... Uh, I'll ask you, what was your biggest disappointment with that finale? I think my, di- my biggest disappointment... I guess there are a lot of... Two things. I guess, first of all, that they spent ten years building up to Superman, and they felt the need to not show him. I know. And some not, people... not one head-to-toe body shot. I was so pissed off. Yeah, he's either uh, extreme close-up of his face or, uh, or CGI'd from a distance. And I, people have tried to defend it with the bullshit reasons like, oh, well, it's not about seeing him. It's about the show's about Clark. And I'm like, no, the show is about this journey that Clark has gone on to becoming the biggest superhero in the world. I know. And, I, I mean, yes, it's about Clark, but just, you're not, Superman is the most recognizable fictional character in the world, and you're afraid to show him in that iconic suit. Are you kidding? I, I, it was an absolute piss take. What annoyed me more was the fact that the show had for ages kind of been hinting at some stuff and and uh, in the earlier seasons they they'd had the um the superman theme play a couple times and you know they had clark flying in his sleep and stuff and suddenly they they completely dropped that um and you know they weren't sh- a lot of the times in that show they for some annoying reason kept pretending like it wasn't a superman show in that they would just kind of hint at it and never come out and say it which, granted, yeah, it's a prequel, so they're not going to say things that haven't happened yet. But the fact that you have Tom Welling in the suit, and you don't show him head to toe, what pissed me off more was that every single shot with his face, you just had some CGI cape flapping about. The entire thing looked fake, and he was wearing the suit. He, he was actually... They got Tom Welling to wear the Superman Returns suit. First of all... um. Like, you couldn't get one head-to-toe shot. I mean, it that's, like, the cheapest thing to do. Just get a, I... just get a shot of him. <sighs> yeah, I had actually heard that uh, Tom Welling didn't want to wear the suit. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and that's why they didn't show it. Because um, Tom Welling was a producer, and uh, or an executive producer. I can't remember which one, but so he had a lot of say. And I had heard that he made the call to not wear the suit. And that really pisses me off. If there was people, you know, like to think that I love hating on Tom Welling. Um, but if there was a legitimate reason for me to hate on Tom Welling, that's it. Yeah. You, you wore a Superman suit for a magazine cover in like season, during season one or season two for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like, oh my god. And that was even the Christopher Reeve suit. So if there was either he had to be more embarrassed about... I mean, I love the Christopher Reeve suit, but I'm trying to find some kind of logic in his decision. Oh my god, it gets me so angry, Shades. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's... It, it. I don't like Tom Willing as an actor. Like, that. I just I just don't like him as an actor. See, there, um, were, there were times I liked him, and there were times I didn't. They're like, the earlier seasons, I don't think he's trying at all. Um... I mean, there were moments where he he bought me. I forgot I was watching Tom Welling, but um, I think he made a good Clark Kent for the most part. He he naturally became a much better actor through the years. Um, but uh, they they try to to really clumsily set up the Clark Kent persona as a nerdy person and have him be Clark that everyone knows. Like, uh, it they made the right choice in in ending the show there, because there was no way they would have sold me on the idea that all his friends that he's talked to over the years wouldn't recognize him as Superman. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, it's funny, because I guess I have kind of a different reaction where I didn't mind Tom Welling in the early seasons. And, because he was kind of this awkward guy who, who was finding his place in the world. And then, but the problem... I think he got lazier the longer the show went on. Um, I think Rosenbaum brought out the best in him, and once he was gone, 
I don't think he intended this, but it was like he didn't care. And, I mean, clearly he did. He became a producer and everything, and, you know, they could have cancelled at any time. And he's even said, uh, you know, if, if if enough fans want a season 11, I mean, we'll do one. And I was like, wow, nice. Um, and <laughs> I, I, But he got, he just got really bad at the end. And I, I kind of liked him when he was... Uh, uh, under the influence of like red kryptonite or when he was bizarro oh he, he always like... he always played a great evil guy yeah yeah he played that quite well um but and i even kind of liked him as like bumbling clark when they would do that in like alternate realities and, and things like that yeah um not so much in the in the very last scene where he's going oh excuse me and oh i'm sorry miss lane i was like god jeez just <laughs> yeah uh, Oh, and... yeah, that... he's totally not raising his voice for any reason. Yeah, I uh... he doesn't the, want. I was gonna say the the other thing that pissed me off. Uh, actually, I'll just bring up bring up this real quick. They they do the wedding of Lois and Clark in the the finale, uh, yeah. and uh, there, there there's like it's a full house. There's maybe like a hundred people or so in attendance actually no there'd be more than that because you'd probably feel like 10 people to an aisle so yeah. there's like a lot of people there and we recognize two characters <laughs> yeah isn't, isn't it just green arrow and um chloe oh yeah i mean sorry even apart from them like we, we oh, recognize right. so i guess all together we recognize four characters in attendance there is green arrow and chloe in the audience there is Martha Kent, and the ghost of Jonathan Kent. Is he? Of these, one of these people, one person is dead, and everybody else there, it, we're meant to buy the fact that all these people would get invited to this wedding when we've never met any of them, and like Martian Manhunter isn't there, or just all these other characters that have been in the show. That any of the Justice League? Up. Any of the Justice League, yeah. And and, and that that's fine to expect because they did have a couple of or or at least one Justice League themed episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the thing that yeah that was ugh, just thinking about it. But the um, what else annoyed me was the revelation that allowed him to fly. Um, yeah, they had big this bloody power up throughout the entire season. And what I got was the power was always inside him. He always had the power. He just had to be at some kind of the right emotional state to use it or something like that. Um, yeah. He had to uh, something to do with will, something to do with um, serenity, something like that. Um, and uh, and then suddenly, jor just freezes time and says, and flicks a switch and says, there you go. You're ready. You are ready. I have decided because this bad guy conveniently came in and punched you into the air. Maybe it's time for you to start flying. Because the drunken body of uh, of John Glover just walked in the room. So he's, <laughs> you got to get him. Fly and into him and he'll explode. I know. Uh, that, that made me laugh my ass off. Um, the fact that that was the fight. He just flew into him. Oh my god. Um, Superman versus uh, uh, Darkseid was put on live action television, ladies and gentlemen, in the form <laughs> of Clark Kent flying into a very disheveled looking Lionel Luther. <laughs> they use they use Lionel Luther for a lot of characters. They used him for Jor- uh, for Jarrell once. Yeah. Um, John Glover must have had a ball <laughs> doing that show. Poor guy must have been violated. <laughs> Oh, uh, and 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 uh, it was just so like, whew, the <laughs> the annoying thing about the flying was that, like I said, we knew he could fly. He just had yeah. to get the. They showed him flying in the homecoming episode. They showed him floating with Lois, which I thought was a fantastic ending. Yeah, and that further like... that further you know proved my point that. It's about being at the right emotional state, um, and and then this and then 
what even pissed me off more was when he goes back into the Fortress of Solitude, now with the power of flight, and he says, I was wrong. I had to embrace both the Kryptonian and the human side. He's gone <laughs> through that character arc about seven times in this show. You did that in season one. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. It's yeah. It, it, the I was gonna say the other thing that infuriated me was obviously the Lex Luthor mind erase. Oh god, yeah. God was that dumb. Yeah, and um, like they they could never decide whether they wanted to do um, their own continuity if they wanted to make it uh, part of the Christopher Reeve continuity, um, or if it was somewhere in between. And because they couldn't ever decide, you know, they set up this great parallel. Like one of the best scenes in that episode is when Lex and Clark finally confront each other. And yeah, and uh, Rosenbaum is fantastic in that scene. And yes, yeah, like he, he was there this whole time. It's yeah. like he hadn't missed. Anything. And you get this sense that there's. A, I mean, it kind of sucks that he had to come back via this guy as a clone, and he's not technically the original, but he's still got all the memories, so he technically is. Like I could get past that because the um, relationship that they had set up was so. That was great. I, I thought they they nailed that perfectly. Um, because they always got uh, whatever went wrong throughout the whole series, they always got Lex right for the most part. Um, and uh, I think Michael Rosenbaum is um, is uh, he is Lex Luthor. Um, I, I I love it. I love him so much um, as Lex Luthor. And the fact that they because it's going to be like they they had to set up the status quo, and that meant contriving stupid things like erasing his memory. Yeah. I it even baffled. better is that I believe that Lex was meant to be the original Lex. Yeah. So that that Lex wasn't a clone. It was the actual Lex, and they rub some oil on his face, and he forgets everything. Instead of doing the new and possibly really interesting thing of Lex Luthor knowing that Clark is Superman right from the get-go. And that's that's a great idea. That could... It could be really bad, but it could be a really interesting concept. Yeah. We'll never know. Um, because they decided to play it safe and do the absolutely dumbest thing. You know, we, we can't do... We, we can't establish our own continuity because then the fans will get angry that we're not uh, following the comics close enough. So we'll just... We'll just contrive a stupid way to get things back to formula. <laughs> but, you know, oh. it, it's just like, it's it's the pussy way out. And even funnier is that they tried to, like, do the thing. That, Smallville all the time would do things where it's like, oh, look at us. We're being like the comics. Yeah. You know, they'd like, it's like they put like a big sign up with an arrow pointing down. It's like, <laughs> yeah. well, comics. <laughs> and it, it, but so often they would do things that were completely unlike the comics, yeah. and it's just I don't dislike the show because it's not like the comics. I dislike the show because I don't think it was intelligent enough. Yeah, and I, I don't think it ever really established what it was trying to do or be. Yeah, um, the show definitely ran on for too long. I stopped watching after. Um, uh, I, I couldn't stand sitting through season six. I think I actually stopped watching the show for a few seasons um, at that point. Because, um, of course, that was the infamous uh, Lex, Lana and Clark triangle season, um, which was just painful to sit through. But, uh, yeah, that that show. And, I mean, I, like I'll admit, I geek, I, I I have a moment where I just kind of, I forget about how bad that finale was because the end, you know, he does the shirt rip and I'm like, yeah, Superman. But, um, yeah, it's a cool shot. Sorry? It's a cool shot and it was like the perfect shot to end it on. Yeah. If, you know, they, they actually showed Superman earlier. Yeah, and like that, we should have felt like we, like we sat through 10 seasons. How could you think that not showing him in the Superman suit would not be, would be okay? Yeah. Um, I, I don't understand it. Um, but yeah, that's Smallville. Yeah, it's it's such a shame that we had this comic book TV show on for ten years, and uh, 
I mean, there are a lot of big fans of Smallville, and we might get some people saying, but Smallville was good. And, like, we just gave a thousand reasons why we don't like it, so we justify it. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, I just, I don't, I fail to understand how anyone at CW could go, you know what, what if uh, we extend this to 10 seasons? Like, I just don't understand that thought process. Um, cause CW is the only reason they were on for 10 seasons cause it was a popular show f- by their standards. Um, yeah, and I, I don't standards. mean to be mean by saying by their standards, but if this show was on, uh, NBC or something, it wouldn't, there's no way it would have run 10 seasons. No, not at all. Uh, uh all and, and I, and I also sorry. think it should have been, I think the show should have run for, a maximum of eight seasons, but I I would have been fine if they wanted to le- uh, if they wanted to go for any less than that. Like in a lot of ways, I think season six should have been the final season because they do all the Justice League stuff. Yeah. Like, was that not enough motivation for Clark to go? You know what? I should also be a costume superhero. <laughs> like, I don't get why it's like I'm going to continue wearing this same red jacket and blue shirt. Yeah, and and. And of course, that's like another thing that 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 shot where they're all walking away from the explosion, like that. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cliche, but that also just made me kind of go, yeah. Like it was another one of those Smallville, you know, it, it's Superman uh, moments. You know, he's walking with the Justice League, and it was really hard not to get won over by that kind of stuff. Yeah, that episode, that Justice episode, is pretty cool. Yeah, and you've got um. You can uh, Green Lantern's lantern is in um, is in the corner. Oh, the the absolute justice episode. Uh, yeah, I think so. That when they, it's either that sh- it's either that episode or um, or uh, actually, I think I'm th- I think I'm maybe thinking of two separate Justice League episodes. There's the one where um, uh, they it's Aquaman, uh, Cyborg, uh, uh, what's his name? Impulse. <sighs> Impulse, thank you. Fans are going to kill me. Um, and uh, and Green Arrow and and Superman. Um, and then there's the the two parter, which goes on for like a movie length, which I just thought was so yeah. boring. Um, not going to lie, I thought that went on for way too long. Um, but the but the the cool thing was you got Green Lantern. They've got like um, a bunch of interesting superpower stuff um, on showcase, and in the corner you can see Green Lantern's lantern. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, that, that one, uh, I think that one's called Absolute Justice, and that was written by, I think it was written by Jeff Johns. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, uh, Jeff Johns did some good stuff in Smallville, and other stuff just wasn't as good. Yeah. No fault of Jeff Johns, like that, that he had whatever that show had to work with, so, you know, uh, but it's, uh, I, I kind of like the Absolute Justice one, but at, at the same time, I kind of agree with you, it was... It felt too long, and uh, I just didn't get why there were so many superheroes that were around before Superman. It was yeah. kind of overkill. Well, he's supposed to be the inspiration, isn't he? Yeah. And like, like you said, like you make a perfect, perfectly um, valid um, reason. You know, there was plenty enough motivation for him to become Superman before they ran it into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, when he in season ten, when he got that new suit, oh my god, that just made me sw- throw my arms up in the air and go, I'm "Just fucking really." <laughs> it, it it just it, it's like the last shot is suddenly him standing on a ledge and he's got that crappy suit. That yeah, are you, uh, it's like he went through Ben Affleck's trash and put a big S on it. Like it just <laughs> it looks so tacky. Yeah. Um. Uh, I I'm not gonna lie. I I thought it looked um quite campy. Yeah, I like, sure. Like, I I just I just thought it looked bad. I just, it was like I don't know what that would look like in comic book form, but just in in live action. I mean, it, it did just look terrible. And and he and he never ever did much action in that costume. He only he only wore it for a few episodes, and then they just dropped it. Yeah. So it, it just felt like um and that was also in the homecoming of course so much happened in the homecoming episode. But um 
But the um, but like that was, he's a new man. He realizes what he, he like. He's not wearing the black costume anymore. And I get the kind of the metaphor behind it, but just put on the bloody suit, man. Yeah. Like, it it they're just finding as many ways as they possibly can to, um, just stall it and uh. And it, there was no reason for it, like. It's not like they were afraid to put superheroes in their actual costumes. No. Like Green Arrow, Doctor Fate, like all these guys, Cyborg, uh, even Aquaman to a point, like they all had costumes very much similar to their, to their comic book counterparts. And I don't understand why there was such a big fear about putting Superman in his. That's what people wanted. That's what you were building towards. And it was a huge lack of just knowing what their audience wanted on the part of Smallville to not deliver on that and uh, especially after 10 years like that's really poor yeah and and what's funny is they had the balls to they had they had the, the cheese factor to have him wear that blue and red um, outfit every episode for a, like a good four seasons um, oh. and I, I I'm not gonna lie I, th- I always liked that um, but like I mean, if you have the balls to, like, you, you're going all out there. You're you're putting him in this suit, which is obviously a Superman theme. Why don't you? Why are you trying to find as many ways as you can to not show us Superman stuff? Like, ugh, I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's safe to say we've uh, we've we've ran Smallville into the ground. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Smallville. Sorry, Tom <laughs> Welling. <laughs> no, fuck you, Tom Welling. Uh... <laughs> Oh, that's mean. I I don't I don't hate Tom Welling. I just I don't even dislike you. I just hate this idea that you're the best. See, now I've just got this image of him by the computer, and he's just really upset now. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's he man. If I ever meet Tom Welling, just I'm gonna take like the cheesiest photo with him, as if I'm like such a super fan. <laughs> oh, to be great. Oh, can you imagine if when you saw him, he was in a Superman suit, but he was right up in your face? <laughs> I'm in the suit now. Do you like me now? Oh, oh that'd be awesome. Yeah. I would shake his head. I'm trying to think of um, other TV. I, I guess if we start going into animation, it gets a bit crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, we can do another video on that altogether because there is so much of it. Yeah, um, I'm just going to do a really quick search to see if there are any live-action shows we haven't mentioned. Um, well, I guess, you know, going further back, there was Wonder Woman and there was Flash. And Ooh, do you, wanna, do you want to talk about the Wonder Woman pilot? I have never seen the Wonder Woman show. Uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the Wonder Woman pilot for 2011. Oh, yes, let's. Yes, oh oh, here we go. That thing is awesome. <laughs> that is just a great source of comedy. Yes. Um, On Facebook, you were like, I, I couldn't finish it. And I was like, no, you have to. You have to. Uh, yeah, I I watched the first 10 minutes and I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> and then and was... then, and then then everyone told me to finish it, you in particular. And I, I said, oh, fine, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll suck it up. So I, I, I finished it and I'm glad I did because... Um, Wow. Like like we, we awesome? like we've just gone on uh you know for a good half an hour or more talking about how disappointing Smallville was. I can't imagine how much hatred would be thrown at this show if it went past one episode. Yeah, like it it made Smallville look like uh like uh like the West Wing. Like it just it it was I feel bad because I think uh, Adrian Palicki uh, could have been a good Wonder Woman with a decent script. Uh, she looks like the character. She's not a bad actress. She could have been good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, she looks good as Wonder Woman. And it's just she had everything against her here. Just bad script, bad costume, bad. I, I can't judge the effects or anything because it, obviously it was uh it was a, a pre-effects cut that was leaked. But uh, just uh, oh, got bad 
uh, supporting characters, bad villain. Uh, just, oh god, n- no understanding of Wonder Woman. Yeah. Everything possible going against this show, apart from good casting as the title character. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to formulate words just thinking about it. Yeah. Like, it was, um, uh, all right, it, 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 let's focus on, on, on something. The the thing that, that made me laugh hysterically was the scene where they're talking about the uh, toy. Oh, uh, exactly. Right, right. Exactly. First of all, we should mention to everyone that hasn't seen it, basically, in this TV show, um, and this was this never went beyond one episode. It's a pilot. Um, it never got picked up, um, thankfully. But um, the, the concept is... Um, uh, she's called something in this. I forget what she's called. Um, like she, Dinah Penascara. That was it. Um, she, yeah. a woman named Dinah Penascara. She, uh, sorry, she has... Diana. I don't know why I said. Oh Dinah. yeah, Diana. Like Mary. Diana. Sorry. So so Moira uh, Penascara. <laughs> <laughs> um, she she's going out. With I had stuff. a mouthful of of water when you said that. So try not to spit it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So she's going out with Steve Trevor, who we all know. Um, but uh, so they're going out, and she basically says, "I'm gonna go become a superhero because I'm an Amazon, and I'm not gonna tell you what an Amazonian is." So moving on. Um, uh, so then she she built she basically sets up this company, which all it really does is advertise Wonder Woman. It 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 sells Wonder Woman. It's merchandising. It's yeah. advertisements. Um, it's the She's weirdest thing ever. Yeah. Like she the so that's that's what you need to know for this scene to now um, for our problems with the scene to now makes sense. Um, they're they're in the the boardroom and they're talking about the the toy, and um, and she's kind of talking to her friend who none of us like. So moving on. Um, he then said uh, the. Is he the manager? Uh, yeah, he's like the head of a division of the company or something, I guess. Yeah, he he asks Wonder Woman, you know, um, are you paying attention? She then says, I don't like the toy. He says, what do, you, what do you not like about it? And she then proceeds to go into this big spiel about how it's over, how the toy is over-sexualizing her. And it's mainly focusing on the uh, highlighting of her breasts. Yes. She made the costume. Yeah. What's even better is later in the show, she says to that guard that's guarding the door where the, the guy that she takes down at the beginning of the episode is, is being hidden in the hospital. And she's like, she tries to get into the room by persuading the guard by saying, you like my costume, don't you? This costume opens doors for me. And I was like, wait a second. Didn't... <laughs> Earlier, you give this speech about how you hate the fact, and this is a direct quote, I don't like the way it merchandises my tits. And then she says, you know, Wonder Woman is perfect. You know, perfect tits, perfect ass, perfect teeth. I mean, look at these teeth. (laughs) Lord forbid I do anything human. The line... I, I messed up the last part, but she literally says, perfect uh, tits, ass, and teeth. I mean, look at these teeth. That is an exact quote. And <laughs> we're meant to go, oh, poor Wonder Woman. I know. With her perfect assets. She's so over-sexualized. I wonder why. And that asset. Let alone the fact that she's the one doing it. Yep. Uh, oh, it, like, the the... Pilot is meant to make you uh, feel bad for Wonder Woman, but I hate this Wonder Woman. Um, she's she she acts like see the show doesn't have a handle on what the hell it's doing. Um, uh, the we never know why for some reason she feels that she's above the law. Um, yeah, she's not a uh, detective. She's not a lawyer. She's she doesn't really have anything to do with politics and we don't know 
how how much of an outsider she is because the only thing she mentions is she's an Amazonian, but they never go into detail about her backstory or who she is or if she's even human. Um, so um, we have no idea what we have no idea first of all who she is, what's going on. Um, but she acts like she's above the law, and like other people have mentioned this, but it's so true. She she starts calling out this woman who's uh, who apparently they were setting up to be the Lex Luthor of the show. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, I know. Um, they should have shaved her head. Um, <laughs> oh, man, that would have been awesome. <laughs> this show would have been ten times better. That's the thing, Wonder Woman. You need a villain. Uh, she should have, like, gotten really angry when she killed all those guards in cold blood and then just, like, got her, like, a razor and been like, <laughs> I'm shaving your head. And that would have been awesome. Oh. Uh comes into the next scene. I'm Charles Xavier. Would you like some breakfast? <laughs> now that. How could that show not get picked up? We That's have just show. written <laughs> the best TV show on the planet. Oh, Thank man. you, ladies and gentlemen. I, I Screw David E. Kelly. I'm, I'm like rewriting this pilot almost exactly the same, except with a head shave and uh, <laughs> Xavier in it. And it's the best show ever. Oh, my God. But yeah, so... Uh, this woman is basically, she's evil, um, apparently, that's what Wonder Woman says. She thinks that she's creating these kind of superhuman criminals. Um, and it's and it's a cosmetic thing, which just made me think of Catwoman. Um, oh, yeah. That's and true. how bloody generic and cliche would you have to be to have the villain also be a woman? Yeah. She, she comes out and she does this press conference where she says, this lady's behind it. I can't prove it. I have no evidence. <laughs> I have no it's evidence, like, but she's bad. Yes, I have no evidence. There is nothing that actually makes me believe that she could be the villain, but she is because it says so in the script. Yeah. And, and it, the funny thing is, they're watching it on the TV, and she's like, yeah, you have no evidence. Yeah, she literally comes to Wonder Woman and says, you have no evidence, you have nothing on me, you're an idiot. And Wonder Woman's like, haha, but I'll get you eventually. <laughs> like, are you really? Because you clearly have nothing. You should have just, like, gotten out of lasso and then, like, choked her and been like, tell me the truth. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're calling it the lasso of truth. It never does what it's supposed to do. Like, she tortures that one guy with it, and somehow she gets the truth. She, she pulls out the last sue and the music goes, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, not the last sue of truth. <laughs> She's going to kill the guy. <sighs> and this then, show is the greatest thing ever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and and they even, they, they even go for the glasses Clark Kent disguise. Yeah, like, she, uh, here's the thing, and this is kind of a kind of a, a, a cool concept, but it doesn't really work, where Wonder Woman uh, is a celebrity uh, as Wonder Woman, but also as Diana, as Diana Themyscira, uh, the leader of this, uh, this Wonder Woman empire. Um, so, you know, her secret identity is also a celebrity that everyone knows is Wonder Woman. But she feels like, I need some kind of downtime. So she creates a third persona, which is Diana Prince, where she goes to her apartment in, like, L.A., uh, where she has a cat that, I guess, feeds itself because she's never there. <laughs> and she sits down and watches The Notebook and cries and goes, I'm going to create a Facebook page. And this is riveting television. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous um and like <clears throat> she says um that's her big spiel uh should i be I i'd like to integrate with humans or or you know have a social life i don't know if it's because she wants to integrate with humans because she's not one or because she is so super that she feels like she's lost touch with her humanity but you know in saying that i think i'm giving it too much thought i just don't think the show itself knows yeah but i don't think the show knows at all and uh it's just a very dumb show. They're like David E. Kelly clearly 
knows nothing about Wonder Woman. And I, I'm no aficionado on Wonder Woman, but geez, even <laughs> I know that's not the character. Yeah, exactly. Like, if if, uh, if NBC came to me and said, could you please, uh, Mr. Shades, write a Wonder Woman TV show, uh, and we, we're not going to ask anyone else, so don't you dare deny it, I'd be like, okay. And then I'd go and do some research. Yeah. Do, you know, do what Brian that's what Singer you do did. When you don't know about some. Do what Brian Singer did, you know. Go read the yes. comics. Go watch some uh, for for the the least you the least they could do. Go watch some uh, Wonder Woman animated shows, or go watch. Well, maybe don't go watch the original. But I mean that that still to a point was, you know, had the tone right. I mean that original show uh, is is basically what made Wonder Woman such a famous character. Like what we were saying at the beginning of this podcast about the Flash and the Hulk being these recognizable characters that everybody knows, even if they actually don't know anything about them beyond how they look. Uh, Wonder Woman's one of those characters. Yeah. Um, and that is because she became such a famous character on television. And uh, it's... Yeah, it, I, I still don't get why they have failed to get Wonder Woman right so many times. Uh, like why they couldn't do a movie and why this TV show, which seemed like the best chance, sucked so bad. Uh, it's really a shame. Like I'm not like this big Wonder Woman fan. I appreciate the character, but I don't really know a whole lot about Wonder Woman. And I just feel like, I mean, surely it's not that hard to get it right. And, but apparently it is. So, which is, which is a shame. The, the really annoying thing about Wonder Woman is that um, the she was created with the intention of being uh, the the female Superman, a fee, a bit, a, you know, uh, a um, a model, not a model. That's not the word I'm looking for. An iconic female superhero, um, you know, a role model. That's what I was thinking of. Um, and uh, and that uh, I think writers have a really big problem with when you sit down to start writing a Wonder Woman story. Um, do you tell a story about her being you know, uh, be, like drawing attention to the fact that she is a woman, because I mean, she is an Amazonian, and there's a big thing about you know, um, gender uh, equality and all that kind of stuff. But I think that was handled almost perfectly in the Wonder Woman animated movie. Yeah, like that. That was a really good movie, I thought. And uh, I, I mean, I, I had some things I didn't like about it, but it, it, you know, why they couldn't look at that? It doesn't take much to sit down and just watch that. Yeah, I mean, go, I mean, all you have to do, all you have to do is watch the uh, is watch the scene where uh, Steve, you know, uh, finally talks back to her and and tells her, you know, the Amazonians aren't so perfect either. Less communication between men and women isn't what the world needed. All you have to do is watch that bloody scene. Yeah, and um, uh, it it doesn't exactly encapsulate everything about Wonder Woman, but it, um, I mean, that material was already handled perfectly. This show doesn't know whether it's appealing to men with, um, you know, the costume. Um, it doesn't know whether it's appealing to women with, you know, having a sit down, eat ice cream um, with a cat. It doesn't know if it's trying to uh, make her sympathetic or make girls relate to her because, you know, she's being over sexualized. It just doesn't know what the fuck it's doing. Yeah, it, it's a real shame. And the fun, one of the funniest things that happened after it was that. David E. Kelly now just has this Wonder Woman suit lying around. Yeah. So in his show that was still going on at the time, he wrote in, which was like a, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was it's like a, uh, a, a, a lawyer uh, court show, and they he decides, hey, we're going to do this thing where one of our lawyers is going to represent this woman who dresses up as Wonder Woman. And beats the crap out of a guy. <laughs> and who do they get to play the Wonder Woman girl? But Erica Durantz, who was Lois Lane in Smallville. <laughs> That's great. It was, it's it, it really funny. I So she plays evil Wonder Woman. Uh, just awesome. That's that's great. I, uh, I didn't mention this. I thought Erica Durantz was one of the... Um... Uh, one of the good sides of the Smallville TV show. 
yeah, like I often didn't like her material, but I I did like Erica Durant as a casting choice. Like, yeah. I, I like her as an actress. I thought she was quite good. She's got good presence. She does, yeah. I like her a lot. So, yeah, that was Wonder Woman. Yeah. The weirdest show on the planet. You know, I um, I tried to watch, uh, I think it's Generation X. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a uh, a telly movie. Uh, so it, I guess it, it also counts as a movie, but it was it was made for television. Uh, but that you know, I didn't know if there could be a, an X Men movie worse than X Men Three. Then I saw Generation X. So, oh God, <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, it. I don't think we even really need to get much into it. Um, I watched about 10 minutes of it. Um, characters are all wrong. Um, Emma Frost, nothing like Emma Frost. Where the hell is Charles Xavier? Yeah, I mean, I'm, gonna, I, I'm going to uh, encourage everyone to try and watch this. Because it's so bad, you have to see it. Kind of like the Wonder Woman pilot. Uh, it, it is so bad that, you know... You kind of got to see it to believe it. But uh, running Xavier's school is Emma Frost and Banshee. And uh, the only other notable X-Men character that's there that people actually know is Jubilee. Jubilee, yeah. And everyone else is is very uh, minor, minor X-Men characters. And uh, like you, you don't expect uh, Rogue or Cyclops or Storm or any of these characters. It, you know, don't even expect some of the more popular young characters like Pixie or, or Rock Slide or, or any of those guys. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's just like the lowest of the low. Oh, God, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that kind of wraps up our, um, our discussion. Cool. We've been talking <laughs> for two hours and ten minutes. Isn't that awesome? I know. <laughs> You're welcome, Internet. Yeah. Uh, I stole if that you're line still with us, well done. Yeah. Yeah, good on you. Especially after we kept getting up and coming back. We're making ourselves <laughs> sound terrible. We. <laughs> yes. But seriously, everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, Shades, thank you again for coming on, man. Um, I, as, as always, I enjoyed it a lot. My pleasure, man. We should make this a regular thing. This was re- really fun. Yeah, we should. I'm trying to think of... Maybe well, mm, trying to think of different topics we could we could do. Maybe that's a conversation we need to have another time. Yes, <laughs> not on the air. <laughs> Let's talk about how much our subscribers suck. Oh wait, no, no. Oh god, they're still listening. <laughs> how about this, guys? If you want to hear us talk about something in particular, uh, let us know. Uh, yeah. Maybe if if you guys think like there's something else that we could discuss, that that'd be cool. I'd, I'd, like to hear what other people think as well yeah um so yeah go for it guys um as long as it's as long as it's kind of something we we we're familiar with like we're not gonna do a podcast about gossip girl <laughs> well actually that reminds me uh we did not bring up the walking dead and that is honestly because i've seen the first season started watching the second season it's just not for me uh that's just that's all I have to say about Walking Dead. Sorry. Uh, I've never given it a shot. Um, I'm just not a zombie guy. No, that's fair, and neither am I, and that's kind of why I. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like, there's there's that show. There's, um, and I'm not I'm not talking about uh, comic book to TV shows, but there's that show. There's Game of Thrones, and then there's Breaking Bad that everyone is telling me to watch, and I just can't be asked. Yeah, like, and I feel I bad not... about it. Yeah, it's, I uh, I watched the first season of Breaking Bad, and I really liked it. It was really short. And uh, then I started watching the second season, and I found it so slow and boring, and I didn't love it. And then the third season was kind of the same, and I went, well, I'm sorry, this isn't for me. And, you know, it is, I, I hear all the time about how it's the greatest show on television, and yeah, cool. It's just not for me. I, I don't think Breaking Bad is going to suffer by me not watching it. Uh, and uh, as for Game of Thrones, I have not watched it yet. It's 
I don't, I'm not a bad bandwagon guy. Like, just because something is popular, I'm not just going to be like, oh, I better watch this. I just, you know, it's been getting great reviews and, and everyone loves it. So there's every, uh, in, you know, there's every reason why I should give it a chance. And I'm not, not watching it out of spite. I just, I'm into watching other things right now. And, uh, yeah. I don't want to have to catch up. So, uh, you know, Dexter just ended. So I guess I got a bit more free time on my hands, but, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's also another show I never bothered to try and get into the, 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 the show I can think of, uh, most recently that I, uh, got into that also, you know, decreased over time was heroes. Um, F- yeah. fantastic first season and then everything from then on like it, sometimes I think the second season it dropped significantly but then it kind of came back up in season 3 um, by season 4 it was just what the hell are you doing it's funny uh, I I'd heard all the stuff about heroes and my friend lent me seasons 1 and 2 uh, to watch and so I watched them back to back so I didn't see a problem with season 2 because I, I saw it along with season 1 Right. Uh, and once again, it's it's really short because the writer's strike happened. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of things I like in season two. I The original concept was to bring in new characters, uh, to do like a completely new cast every season. And season one was so popular that they just didn't do that. But one of the things I liked about season two was the new characters that they brought in, uh, apart from the two characters that were from... Uh, I guess they're from Mexico. Um, oh, the brother and sister. Yeah, I couldn't stand them. Callisto. Callisto, exactly. Yeah, her. Oh uh, God, can you believe that? That's her name. Yeah. <laughs> She's not it's... Callisto. I apologise to everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like, I, I liked uh, West, the flying character. Uh, I I really liked L. Uh, uh, um. Kristen Bell's character. I, I liked the the girl who was the copycat. Um, yeah, I thought that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I liked those characters, and I liked uh, some of the things that they were doing, like with Nathan's character, of him like seeing himself as Two Face was kind of cool. Yeah, uh, just seeing characters get to do new things, like Parkman and Suresh adopting. Uh, 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 what's her name? Dr. Molly Walker. Uh, the girl like, that can see people. Yeah, yeah, Molly Find Walker. Like, I, I really liked that stuff, and unfortunately, the show got cut short. And what they were intending sounded really cool. Um, yeah. There are things I like in season three. I didn't watch season four for a really long time because I was really kind of afraid to watch it because I knew it had an ending that left it wide open. Yeah. And I watched season four. I liked it. I think it felt the most like a comic book, uh, funny enough. And there were things there that kind of didn't work. But by the end, I kind of really liked the very end. Uh, they didn't utilize all the characters anywhere near enough. But once again, it was kind of like a, a comic book, very much like the X-Men, where there were major characters that just didn't show up for episodes at a time. Yeah. And that's how it is on big team books. Uh, or they'll just be in the background. It kind of doesn't work like that in television. But when this was so closely uh, connected to comic books, I, I kind of liked that about it. Um, it's a shame that it got cancelled when it did because I think by the end it was getting its mojo back a little bit. And now after all these years, they're apparently looking at doing the comic book of uh, season five. Oh, I, I, like I've officially volume five i guess is what they call it oh right uh but or volume six because they did volume five was season four just to confuse everyone uh <laughs> but I, I i am gonna at least pick up the first issue but they're looking to make it more about claire and sila and i would rather read peter petrelli so yeah he's kind of the main he, he was the main protagonist at the very start Exactly. Yeah, I've got I've got Heroes Volume One. Um, I haven't read it um, since I bought it. Um, as I remember, pre- it was decent. Um, didn't make much of an impact on me. Um, 
No, because they were released as like almost little one shots to go along with the episode that was on at the time. Yeah. So as a trade, it probably doesn't work all that well. But uh, I liked it for what it was. I really liked the comic that they were releasing with season three, which was uh, like telling the story of what some of the characters that weren't around uh, at all in that season were doing as the characters were being hunted down, de- as the heroes were being hunted down. And uh, characters like West and uh, and uh, the invisible character uh, that, that, uh, that Doctor Who played. Um, I can't remember him. Oh, uh, uh, Jesus, what's his name? Uh, in Thor 2, uh, uh, he was Doctor Who. What's his name? <laughs> uh, Thor 2. Uh... Oh, uh, Christopher Eccleston. Christopher Eccleston. Thank he you. He was in Heroes. Yeah, he was an invisible, the invisible guy. What? In I can't one. believe I never knew. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that now. Yeah, <laughs> he's awesome in Heroes. I uh, love. I, I'm a huge Christopher Eccleston. I can't believe I missed that. He's my favorite Doctor. <laughs> it's funny because I'm like not at all a Doctor Who guy, um, but Oops. I really like Chris Eccleston and. Uh, uh so yeah he's in heroes and like him and west and uh the copycat character and uh micah the the the, the kid who eventually came into season three again like they all have this team and they go and save people and uh molly walker's there as well it's really cool yeah um and i wish they had kind of continued that as a comic book series but they didn't so whatever yeah and they they also pulled the the continued in a comic book series with uh, Smallville. Yeah, Smallville season eleven. Uh, I have not bothered to pick that up at all. Me neither. But they really pissed me off when Didio was like, "Actually, that's not Stephanie Brown." Ha 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 ha! Suck it, fans. So, yeah. Screw him. And uh, <laughs> and and I I know this is stupid. It's not the reason I haven't picked up the comic, but I can't stand the Batman costume they're using in that comic. Oh, it looks stupid, yeah. It looks absolutely ridiculous. And, um, yeah, I, I I, think Smallville works better if you just don't explore what happens afterwards. Um, yeah, I. they kind of ruined what they were going to do anyway when they erased Lex's mind. The most interesting thing they could have done, they ruined. So Yeah, all that, all that character development ugh, gone to waste. Anyway, we've gone way too far about Smallville. Um, yes. I guess we just in case any Smallville fans are smashing their laptop uh, at the moment, um, we'll put your mind at ease. We liked various aspects of the show. Um, quick, think of something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a backhanded compliment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I liked uh, Supergirl was hot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're, yeah, we're, we're really grasping at straws now. It, I can't. <laughs> no, no, no there, there, there definitely was stuff I liked. Like I liked, um, I liked the the casting for the most part. I I loved um, uh, Jonathan Kent. Yeah. Part. Um, he was played by. I I thought he was a much better Jonathan Kent than we had in uh, Man of Steel. Uh yeah, I would agree with that. Um. Upon a, uh, a third viewing of Man of Steel, I kind of realized how much, uh, 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 gosh, what's his name? Um, uh, Kevin Conroy. Kevin, Kevin Costner. Costner, yes. Who's Kevin, Kevin Conroy? Conroy as Jonathan Kent. Um, I'm trying to remember who Kevin Conroy is now. Oh, it's bloody Batman. It's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Kevin Costner is, is very kind of void of emotion. Yeah. Well, I, like I, I saw you say that in your review, and I was like, "Is he really?" And yeah, you're right. He is. <laughs> he, that I, I'm, I, I know the act. Like a lot of people are saying, the actor's good. Uh, I'm sure the actor's good. I haven't seen him in many things. Um, uh, the thing, I, Jonathan Kent creeps me out in that film. He's got this kind of creepy, controlling vibe in that. I can understand being. Uh, I can understand caring about your son. You don't want him to get experimented on, all that good stuff that's been brought up before in other Superman stuff. But it's to the point where he he doesn't believe in humanity so much to the point where he's willing to die to make a point. 
it's and and like he the fact that he says you know clark asks him what should i have done just let him die and he goes maybe this guy is willing to let kids drown in order to keep his secret. Like, Jonathan, like, I can understand you you wanted to keep your son safe, but Jonathan Kent, um, he had more... He had ethics, he had morals. He would root for his son to do the right thing if the time comes for it. Yeah. And I just... Uh, and, like, he goes out in the blandest way possible. He just puts up his hand and... Like, I'd love to act it out now if there, if we had visuals on this podcast, but... He just pulls the straightest face. It it borders yeah. on comedic for me. I'm sorry. It's like you're about to see me die. It's okay. Like so in I was my, gonna say that you're like, a superhero. Like in my review, um, I, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm doing the. Um, I'm. I've been writing the spoiler filled review for it, for cool. for fucking ages now. Um, but the, <laughs> the review is massive. Um, that's why it's taken so long. In case anyone's wondering, but the um, there's a part where I'm where the scene's playing and you know he's screaming you know dad and i'm just going uh faster than a speeding bullet anyone nope yeah you know, that's true like that's a good point like I, I don't usually like to nitpick on scenes when you know we know a character could do something with his powers like if we were that character we would have done this that and the other because you know you can kind of say that about anything you know, um, I would have thrown the shield differently. I would have punched that guy differently. But they contrived... I can understand what the writers wanted to do. They wanted to have Jonathan Kent's decision border on this, this ideology that the world isn't, right, isn't ready for Superman. But it was so contrived. And, uh, like, Superman could easily have super-speeded over to him, um, saved him, or, you know, better yet, he could have gone back to get the bloody dog. Yeah, it, it, I just the thing that killed it for me was the fact that he went back with the dog. Yeah, I was just like, I, I'm not like a, a pet owner, so maybe I'm cold. But I just was like, really, you're going back with the dog? I just at that, I was like, you know, human lives are at stake here, and you're like, oh, I gotta save the dog. Yeah, and and like I I own two cats. I can understand the love for a pet, but there are times when it's just like. Um, don't you don't go back to get him <laughs> like yeah. um and and well, like I I've accepted that so my next question is why does Clark have to help his mum run a little bit in that direction? I like, also don't know why Clark's mum was like we gotta save the dog, and Jonathan just goes back to do it. I'm like okay, Clark and- Kent, would you rather have your pet dog? <laughs> Or your husband alive. I know. It's ridiculous. Anyway, we are way off topic. <laughs> way off topic. Uh yeah, I guess we'll I guess we'll wrap it up now in case we Yeah. The second oh, we, we mention something else, we're gonna go on a big thing about something else. But um thank you yeah. to everyone for joining us. Um and uh apologies for saying this about half nearly half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. Um but that shows how pumped Shades and I are to um, talk about everything humanly possible. Yeah, we, we never get to do this, so we had a lot to talk about. So hopefully that's a good segue into telling you all once again to um, post suggestions for what to talk about, um, and we'll, um, we'll discuss it. And uh, I'm pretty much sure... The one thing we know we will be doing is we will be doing a podcast when the trailer for Days of Future Past comes out. Yeah, we're going to do a discussion about that. I am uh, so pumped to talk about Days of Future Past. Yeah, the the leaked footage uh, got me excited. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Not looking forward to the lack of Cyclops, but we'll see. I'm, I'm secretly um, putting out hope, man. I've, yeah. I really think they're up to something. Uh, the fact that he was seen in Montreal with with Halle Berry, I'm like, well, he might have just been going to say hello, or he might have been shooting a very small scene. So, like, once again, we've gotten off topic, so, yeah, we'll, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to everyone for joining us. I'm Sam. I'm Shades. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.